let's let's talk. Let's let's make a small change of pace here, and let's talk about motherfucking anarchy. Let's talk about hell yeah. Um, let's talk about all kinds of, of things. I had a couple of questions for you, and um, then we can uh, get uh, Sansol in here, and I think, sure. like, I think I think he's looking to be properly anarcho pilled as best as you're able to, and I think if okay. you're up to the task, it might be very fun. Um, I will certainly do my best. Yeah. So I've done. Um, you know, I'm not like a. I have pretty pretty uh wild ADHD. So I don't do mm -hmm. the most amount of reading these days anymore. However, I have done some reading. Um, and with that in mind, now given that we're moving into anarchy, what would be your first recommendation for a primer before we get into you sort of talking about what your understanding of it is and how you, how what it means to you? What would be your primer if you were if people if you were going to give people something to read to watch or whatever on anarchist theory and anarchist thought? So, I am very partial to Malatesta. Um, so, I'm going to give you a tiny bit of history before I give you exactly the piece. So, um, you've got your mid 1800s. There's a socialist, not a movement. It's a pseudo movement before. Um, there's a couple of writings of like utopias, as we'll call them. Um, and, and then you've got some, you know, new writers coming on, you know, people like Proudhon, um, people like, uh, uh, Kropotkin start showing up. Some people and, call him proud Han. Yes. The, the proud honey. Yeah. Um, he is, well, that was one I was looking for, but that does work too. Yeah. <laughs> he is, um, then, then, then Marx comes along. Right. And. And they form, um, after some time, they form the, the, the first international. So there's Marxists there, there's socialists, there's communists. Both of these words have existed with movements attached to them before these people. Um, there's anarchists. And there was the classic historical str struggle um, conflict between Bakunin, the anarchist, and Marx. And... Um, they butted heads a lot on a lot of different ideas. Um, Marx critiques everybody uh, and Bakunin was no different. And after this, the anarchists were cast off from the international. They were sort of forbidden from the interna international. And Bakunin was what you would call a collectivist. And this doesn't have quite the same meaning. We So a lot of people say like, are you an individualist? Or are you a collectivist? You know, uh, a very American way of, yeah. A very, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a wrong, wrong. I don't like it. It's bad. It's wrong, um, yeah. I don't think those words mean much of anything anyways, individualist and collectivist, but what they meant to Bakunin, what collectivist meant to him was sort of a, um, he believed in a sort of, uh, uh, like everyone gets the full product of their labor kind of idea that like, no government we're all working we're doing whatever and we get what we make we make something it's ours um and after their expulsion and after bakunin's death there were two anarchists that were sort of part of that little party who didn't really agree with him on collectivism and instead um decided to um they were communists. They wanted to advocate for communism. And the two big names are uh, Carlo Caffiero and Errico Malatesta. Caffiero did things like wrote a summary of Marx's capital, like a pretty, like it's like a, it's not the big book. I mean, this is capital. It's not a big ass book. It's instead like, digestible and like maybe a you know depending on how fast you read a couple weeks or whatever okay. maybe you know it's it's not a giant short enough. E economics textbook yes like it's not a textbook but it's still like decently sized it's not like a paragraph or anything it's got its own chapters and stuff so these people um Caffiero and Malatesta were the big advocates of anarchist communism um and and Malatesta probably my favorite anarchist i think he i like the way he writes the best um and the pieces that i would recommend for a primer um would be twofold 
Um, A. I almost want to give three, but I'll, I'll, I'll just give, do two. Give us three. Okay, I'll give you three. So you can pick between them. They're about the same, in my opinion. There's a piece called Neither Democrats Nor Dictators, Anarchists. And then there's another piece I think you wrote called um, Democracy and Anarchy. Those pieces are essentially the same. Um, they make the same points, basically. But then it's the two main ones that actually have like a broader, those are mostly criticisms of what exists. And they're kind of short. They're very, very short pieces. They're like a few paragraphs long. But um, the two main pieces that I would use as a primer would be um, an anarchist program and then anarchy. Not the, the most uh, brand brandable names, but they're yeah. very, they're Fair very enough. to the point. Um, and so like anarchy is sort of a broader, like it's a little bit longer and it's sort of like a general ideals. What's the society that we're trying to think of? What's our criticisms that we have of what exists? Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. An anarchist program lays out seven ideals for like what they believe should happen. Like the kind of like, it's like seven sentences on like what they, what they believe. And they're, they're really, I mean, I can, they're super easy. Like, yeah. uh, hit us here. With. Tweeted these more than once, but <laughs> okay, here we go. So the first one, abolition of private property and land and raw materials and the instruments of labor so that no one shall have the means of living by the exploitation of the labor of others and that everybody being assured of the means to produce and to live shall truly uh, shall, shall be truly independent and in a position to unite freely among themselves for a common objective and according to their personal sympathies. Two, abolition of government and of every power which makes the law and imposes it on others. Therefore, abolition of monarchies, republics, parliaments, armies, police forces, magistrates, and any institution whatsoever endowed with coercive powers. Three, organization of social life by the means of free association and federations of producers and consumers created and modified according to the wishes of their members, guided by science and experience and free from any kind of imposition, which does not string, which does not spring natural or from natural needs to which everyone convinced by a feeling of overriding necess necessity voluntarily submits. Four, the means of life for development and well-being will be guaranteed to children and all who are prevented from providing for themselves. Five, this one gets a little rough, but five, war on religions and all lies, even if they shelter under the cloak of science, scientific instruction for all to an advanced level. Six, war on rivalries and patriotic prejudices, abolition of frontiers, brotherhood among all peoples, and seven, reconstruction of the family as will emerge from the practice of love free from every legal tie, from every economic and physical oppression, from every religious pre prejudice. Those are his seven core, as deep as it gets, or as, you know, ideal as it gets. Truths. Yeah. <laughs> axiomatic values. Fantastic. Yeah. I mean, those are those pretty, are the big ones. I mean, that's that's uh, again. Uh, Malatesta is the anarchist of whom I've rich, I've read read the most, um, and also largely influences my political thinking and approach as well. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah. Now that that's been established, now that you've given us the ideal primers, and by the way, everyone, I will list those. Uh, I will list uh, Lexi's recommendations on the the theory channel after all of this. So, if you're interested, I will post them all there. Um, then, um, I would like to hear what anarchy and the concept of anarchy means to you, how it's been valuable to you, how it informs your politics, et cetera, et cetera. So, and you can go as broad or as small as you want to. We'll start super broad anarchy and what it means to me. So mm -hmm. anarchy to me is, it's the, it's the ideal of true collaboration between people, of cooperation and um, the, and okay, so I want to make a little bit of a distinction. Um, anarchy being the end state, the end, quote unquote, like mm -hmm. the society in which the state and government has been abolished and and we are free to, you know, 
organize together and and produce and consume as you know without anyone imposing laws or rules on us we agree to things together um so malatest at some point says that you know common criticisms of anarchy are that the idea is like we would all be by or like like you have to believe that you would have to be all by yourself you know independent from all other people and he's like no like that's not like we need other people that's what that's what that's what this whole thing is we need other people to survive mm -hmm. we need that social development we need like we need these structures of of each other and being that we need each other we also have to come to agreement on things like we, we have like there's going to be agreements that have to come to between people and they will either be free or they will be forced and we want to go for the free we want it to be free voluntary agreement not forced agreement that we need a recognition that mm -hmm. we are in this together, that there is like, we have to secure um, each other's freedom to be free ourselves. That if anyone is held into bondage or, you know, exploitation or, you know, forced anything that we, we can't be free. How, how can you be free while others are, 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 exploited and 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 um enslaved either in you know actual physical bondage or or you know i'll say um a sort of a uh impersonal bondage mm -hmm. so um, you mean yeah. like like a greater uh what's the term um abstracted forms of bondage like uh, a society that makes it necessary for you to work or you die or exactly. you're allowed or you're allowed to die i should say you don't necessarily yeah. instantly die but you're you so there's um to die. i'm gonna i'm gonna double dip here a little bit maybe this is unfair but it's clear being carlo caffiero and and malintested knowing each other and agreeing with marx on a lot of things mm -hmm. um they themselves would have understood Marx's understanding of um, how do I put it? The impersonal domination of the market mm -hmm. of, of capital. I mean, this is like the, the, the big joke, like we made up money, but now that we've made it up, we can't control it. Like mm -hmm. it's, it has a, a life and rules of its own. Like it's, it's okay. Chat. Yes. The, there's that kind of bondage. If that's it was inevitable, bondage. the chat it's not, was going to go that way. It's not real bondage if you agree to it. Okay. Yes. Well, it's, it's, hold it's, on. There's like, there's some kinds of agree, like a, like you can agree yes. to slavery, but that's not what we mean. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> no, no. Oh, this is actually a point that we're going to talk about in a little bit, chat. So hold your fucking, get your dicks back <laughs> in your pants and hold on for a few minutes. All right. I know y'all want to fucking imagine all oh, a future <laughs> anarchist society where we don't have to go to work but you can go home and have your you know femdom beat the shit out of you for sexual <laughs> pleasure or whatever whatever it is that's fine you get to have that in fact you get to have it better than you do now but hold on we'll talk about that okay jesus so, fucking christ so there is there are impersonal abstracted forms of 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 domination and coercion and and we want to be free of those mm -hmm. like in all senses mm -hmm. um so for example um there are many institutions um sort of social institutions that for a really long time and, and to an extent they've existed still today that uh keep women subjugated in various forms and for example um there's a piece that Malatesta wrote. It's a bit of a dialogue between people um, and it's called At the Cafe. It's really good, really easy read, um, it being a dialogue. And at one point, the characters, one of these, so he, it's basically like some socialists and anarchists are talking to some like bourgeois people. That's essentially how it this goes. This is the, the 1800s equivalent of uh, like those Tumblr threads that's like, oh yeah, that happened. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. He's invented two characters that he's put, pitting them in an argument, but, they, but they're both the dolls. And he's like, ha, 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 ha. Exactly, exactly. And then the anarchist wins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And at one point he says, um, 
the anarchist, socialist, whatever they want to describe them, uh, says basically put things into the common. Like they're like society exists and mm-hmm. society should own what society has made. Like these aren't peoples. These are especially like an individual like holder of no, 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 this is society. It's everybody. It's common. We should all be able to use it. And the other guy's like, well, should we put the women into common too? Is that what you want? You want us all to have a big brothel? And he's like, why the fuck would you think that? He's like, are you joking? He's like, no, I thought I was being serious. He's like, well, no, women will do whatever the fuck they want to do. Just like we're going to do whatever the fuck we want to do. That's the whole goal. Like the fact that you even think that is already showing like how fucked up you are right now. Like, no, like let people do what the fuck they want. That's generally how that goes. But back to the bigger, broader question of how does, how how do I, how does anarchism itself influence my own current politics? Mm -hmm. And it's mostly a belief that, Okay, so there's a lot of organizations, um, so like unions and parties and, and, you know, depending on a lot of other things, we can add stuff into this, you know, Mm -hmm. the police and judges and the state in general and, 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 and therapists sometimes and, and some of these are institutions which are corrupted through um like just what we exist under Mm -hmm. like if we're existing in a society where labor is um so important to the continuation of the circulation of things like capital um you know money and stuff like like if this and for accumulating that that you need people to work for you um then things like therapy will be like designed. They will corrupt themselves. Not that therapy isn't, you know, tons of people can get good things from therapy. I don't want anyone to think that that's not true, but also they are institutions of social control and they are institutions that are designed to get you to be functional in the society that exists today. And functional also means a good little worker. Yes. Um, And this is actually something that you, you and I would agree a lot on. Which is that I think therapy has been, I mean, incredibly valuable to me. Um, but interestingly, the therapy that was most valuable to me was not was not about getting me working again. It was not about, mm-hmm. um, you know, fixing on how can I like getting me to make more money. It was about helping me to become satisfied with who I am and figure out mm-hmm. what things are challenging me from self realizing. And I think there is a lot of therapy that can serve like that, but there's also a lot that's just kind of like what you said, where, um, where, you know, you have someone who has been traumatized by their workplace or whatever, and they go into therapy and the therapy is just fixated on how do we get you back to work and working again? And that just is, it's very, it's very self-dealing in a certain way. Yeah. Um, Oh, the person in chat right to school is another good example of like uh, education talking about that a lot. Super important it's like it's incredibly important to to get a good to to be educated so that you can engage with society and 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 higher level thinking and but also that's not what school does school isn't designed to do that school is designed to have you meet some some hyper specific standards to basically make you good enough to be a, a good worker mm-hmm. Um, and the types of work that you will do could be different depending on what you focused on, depending on how deep you go and stuff like that. But these are, it's social control. It's, you know, making sure that there's enough people for production, essentially. Um, and so, um, but other things, so those are things like therapy in school, which are institutions which are not necessarily bad, but could be saved through some 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 larger deeper root change Mm -hmm. you know you can't just give like more oversight to therapy or different testing things for schools like no these have to come from like an entire shift in and what i would say will be a shift in the mode of production Mm -hmm. um that's my big that's the that's the big marxist language here is the mode of production would have to change here Mm -hmm. 
Separately from this, there are institutions which start off with reasonable goals, but outlive their usefulness. Um, and they usually get recuperated and turn into something a little unlike their original form. So for example, modern day unions. Um, a lot of people, um, I, I don't think it's wrong to support unions. I think unions can you know, provide a lot of, you know, collective bargaining is useful. That's, mm -hmm. that's a useful thing to do, but also at the same time, like they, you, they, they literally used to be called and in other places sometimes still are, they were called resistance societies. They were designed like it was, it was full on resistance. It was, it was, we're a class, you're a class, fuck you. Like, this is like, yeah. we're, we're in it. We're in a real antagonism here. Yeah. But over time, this has been recuperated. These have outlived their usefulness as a organizational form and, and have more turned into like, a, tw a, 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 a they just, they have a spot at the table. Mm -hmm. They've, you know, they understand that other people are at the table. They have their thing. They say their piece. If they don't get, you know, enough of what they want, they might try to mobilize their people to do things like a strike. But even that, it's usually on the smaller scale, smaller scale. And like, there are still some big ones, of course. Yesterday, or Jesus, that was today. Holy fuck. Today on my stream this morning, we were talking about um, the big Indian protest, the strike, mm. the huge strike going on in India. And it's a big farmer strike. And a bunch of farmers unions are the ones that, that set it up and got it going. And there have been similar ones in the past. Um, they do it almost yearly, but not quite. And they don't have quite the same demands. And these ones were very specific to some laws that were passed this year. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it's it's very much recuperated into the general, um, you know, capitalist negotiation table, right? right. Like it's all... The, the, end, want some the stuff. end is always going to be, here's a little bit more benefits and not here's what you actually it's, deserve. It's placation yes. rather than full on. And, and the union itself is like, it, it can't do anything else. What could it do? Like full on rebellion usually gets squashed from like a, you know, if, if a union tries to do that, but like a union wants to preserve, I think most institutions can never advocate for their own abolition. Mm -hmm. I think that's even true of, of some classes mm -hmm. that like, like farmers and peasants can't really advocate for their own abolition, their, their relationship to the society itself. It's very and, difficult and... for us to, to envision like, or to be willing to put ourselves in a position where we're putting our own, whatever sustains us at risk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I'm very hesitant to believe in formal institutions. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I'm also hesitant to believe in most forms of, of coercion. Um, I, I'm hesitant. These are all the things that I'm, you know, these are things that I picked up from, from anarchist theory is, 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 I understand that these can be utilized at times, a lot of so a lot of historical anarchists would write things like don't vote for whoever because you're just picking a new master and mm -hmm. and stuff like that and i understand the purpose of this kind of rhetoric um and a lot of people have the misconception that anarchists were always like revolution now you know like yeah, yeah. we're always but that oh, but wasn't that's ever part, but part of that though and this is something i even discussed um actually in a debate that I did some time ago with this right-wing guy um, mm -hmm. was this sort of like, like there's this demonization of anarchy when you, if you look into the actual his history of anarchy, like most anarchists were like set up like a bread stand or some random shit like that. And I'm like every anarchist I've ever met IRL, like when you hear anarchist, you think like cartoon character throwing up a, a bomb or something. And it's like, ah, right. they're the anarchist. But in reality, it's like, no, it's like somebody carrying a, a bunch of groceries to somebody's house. Yeah. Like I'm serious. Like no, totally. Th there's a there's giant anarchist group here in town that has been operating a mutual aid fund and like like that's the sort of thing that most yeah. anarchists historically have done yeah there's two little things i want to say one tolkien when he was describing himself as both an anarchist and a monarchist at the same time 
when he said anarchist, he like puts in like parentheses, not whiskered men with bombs. Like he's yeah. like, that's not what I'm talking about. Um, uh, but secondly, there's a really good story um, of Malatesta. So um, a friend of Malatesta wrote a piece called The Life of Malatesta, and it just went through everything basically. And at one point he describes how uh, basically Malatesta started a little food stand to, to make some money. I love this story. And there were, there were a bunch of hungry kids and people and he, they were poor and he couldn't possibly sell it to them and he didn't want them to go hungry. So he just gave all his food away and he was written to and they were like, hey, like, how's your thing going? And he's like, I've got plenty of customers, but I don't think I'm going to be doing this much longer. <laughs> like, <laughs> kind of, he, he just wanted to help other people and, and the community that he was in. And I think that's, um, I think that's a lot of it is the, the just want to, so for example, um, Malatesta um, said in a letter, I believe that anarchy to him, the ideal of anarchy um, it is, is love. Like it's, it's love for other people and to, 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 to care for them. This, this deep spiritual brotherhoodly love mm -hmm. between people holding you know it together wanting everyone to be okay he says that uh uh what the christians call charity um we call like solidarity mm -hmm. in in one word it's you know loving one another love doesn't just give a little bit it gives and it wants to give more every time like mm -hmm. and i i i feel while being maybe a little uh idealistic not in the marxist sense of the word but a little it's a little um Utopia. a little flowery yeah. but i i i really appreciate that um a lot of people fall into weird lines of uh i'll call it pseudo revolutionary fervor where they just want to fucking fight like mm -hmm. just to fight mostly yeah and so for example, I almost wanted to say this when we started, but we went on Tolkien instead. We chose That's Tolkien. Fine. I think that was a good choice. Yeah, yeah, but I was, was listening great. to you before I came on and you were talking about Rush Limbaugh and you were talking yeah. about Rush Limbaugh's weirdly terrifying push for civil war. Yes. Um, and I wanted to say that oftentimes, you ever watch one of those like doomsday shows, like um, like the like the preppers, right? Like yeah, doomsday oh, preppers. For sure. Yeah. Frequently. So the things that doomsday preppers do are dumb. They're stupid. Very They're wasteful. Like, like more than more than wasteful. That's true. They don't seem to understand if the world collapses, if the state collapses, if no one, you know, there's no real stability. You don't need a hundred guns and five hundred thousand rounds of ammo. What you need is a garden. What you need yes. is good water and soil and 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 the ability to make food yourself. What you need is a community that's ready to stand behind. You don't need to be ready to murder people. No, you need to be ready to to take care of other people so that they take care of you. Yes. That's the goal. Yeah. That's because we need each other. Mm -hmm. That's these are the things and and if you're talking revolutionary forever and and what revolutionaries did if you look at if you look at historical revolutionaries the goal wasn't like like right now there was some big revolution or or uprising i should say and they mm -hmm. stormed the the capital they stormed congress or the white house or whatever mm -hmm. that really wouldn't matter most of these people aren't there at the same time there's you know th there's various uh movie shit it is movie shit. What's way more important is like, is your electricity maintained? Are your water systems maintained? Are yes. your, like, these kinds of things are where they, where a lot of people don't realize it's a necessity mm -hmm. that, that having the access to power and water and food are like the, <laughs> some of the, 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 of the utmost importance really. Right. Um, it's funny you mentioned that too, not to interrupt you, but earlier today no, 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 I was please. reading about the history of co-ops in the United mm -hmm. States specifically. And very interestingly that you bring on this, 
the earliest co-ops in the United States were often water, food, and electricity co-ops in rural areas where corporations didn't um, believe it was, you know, they concluded it wasn't profitable to set up water systems or electricity systems. So a bunch right. of people would come together and say, all right, let's pool our resources and let's build our own in this area and it will be mutually owned between us. Yep. So just fe Absolutely. felt like that would add some you know, no, yeah. context for people who are history nerds and want to tie in something. So, yeah. So I'm trying to think if there's any other big ways to talk about my, um, what I feel like I've gotten from anarchy. Um, I think a big one is, a. Uh, so in, in the same way that institutions can outlive their usefulness, um, and of course, we can all recognize that um, various institutions of power don't want to give up their power. Like they can't believe in their own abolition. That's right. completely against their interests. More than that, there's a criticism I feel like I've picked up of how certain institutions can't go away once they've started. Uh, um, so like, for example, like, national security mm -hmm. intelligence agencies the the homeland security tsa how do you get rid of any of these like how does a politician get rid of any of these can you how, how do you be the politician that gets rid of the tsa and then maybe it doesn't matter if it was that year it doesn't matter if it's 10 years from then a plane blows up a plane gets hijacked right. you know how what do you do there? And of course, with the regular intelligence agencies, you have to ask the questions of, well, what are the other intelligence agencies across the world? You know, if yeah. they have them, we have to have them. It's the, it's like a nuclear arms, you know, conversation all over again. I had that conversation and, earlier this year, actually. Yeah. 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 It was very good. It's, um, but it's exactly that, 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 that kind of stuff where like politicians, we often want to believe that politicians are beholden to us and have to do what we want and have to, um, uh, uh, are, this is the big one, are actually in control. Like the belief that politicians control the actual decisions that get made. And mm -hmm. I don't, I feel like it's a little um, naive that, oh, yeah. that like, sure, not all politicians are the same and sure so here's another big thing you can mm -hmm. talk about class interests yeah. um you've got your uh your your working class right and your working class wants things like higher wages and protections at work and time off and you know yeah. shorter work dates and you've got your owning class who is like i want uh the most amount from my workers as possible and i want you know uh, uh, to be able to expand my, 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 uh, uh, business to as many places as possible, to make as much money as possible, to circulate capital as fast as possible, like all of these things, like whatever. Um, and, and they're at a constant struggle and that struggle makes us want to believe that they have all the same interests. So this is often said, like, the capitalist class, the, the property, the business class of the world um, has its class interest. Mm -hmm. And that's true, but only in certain contexts. In other contexts, they have completely different ones. So there are capitalists who believe um, that something needs to be done about climate change. And there are other ones who yeah. believe in the short-term goals of their oil, you know, properties and, and right. they want to make the most out of that. And so they go on, like, they don't have exactly the same There's interest no on everything and all no the monolith. times, no monolith. And so it's not that the state, which if you're like me, you believe that the state is, um, as Marxists would put it, um, an organ of class rule mm -hmm. that, um, it is, it is a in our society largely a um and i mean the world society right now but yeah. in our society the a a a form of mediation between these conflicting interests but more than that controlled by the property the the the, the business people the mm -hmm. capitalists because 
they're the they're the ones that continue to make capitalism do its due like right without you know labor's always going to exist and and they're the they have all the the, the the wealth they can influence politics that way they can like and as we see from time and time again the big institutions the the big businesses they get they often get you know bailed out because they right. have to because letting big banks and big businesses like that fail means the destruction of economies yeah like, absolutely that's it can that's be that's horrible yeah and I, like I, I as we've seen I, from covid for example and and that's kind of what i believe neoliberalism is is the desperate constant grasp to continue capitalism through any means necessary like bail this out, bail that out, get, you know, like it's, it's the constant, you know, liberalized markets. It's, it's that constant push to, you know, keep it flowing because it has to flow because if it stops flowing, the system stops working Right. and the system has to work because that's the system that we're doing. So we have to keep doing it. Right. So yeah. self -repetitive. yes, the different politicians will advocate different things and they will be able to pass different things, but there is a larger undercurrent that can't change mm -hmm. no matter who's in power there, you know, uh, uprisings in the street it doesn't matter if a liberal is in power it doesn't matter if, if if a conservative is in power it doesn't matter if a fascist is in power uprisings in the street have to get put down because mm -hmm. that's what the state has to do they maintain the status quo right they that's that's their job is to keep it flowing keep it moving if it stops we're in trouble yeah. so when big strikes happen it's not give them what they want it's make them shut the fuck up like yeah. And if that so means if that means we have to give them some of it, well, all right, our hands have been yeah. forced. But they're you know, gonna it's gonna be a struggle the entire way. We had a big thing uh in the twentieth century in the United States where we got really worried about how we looked on TV. Mm -hmm. And um death looks really bad on TV, like really, really bad. So it gets easier to start to placate, but placations come in new forms and 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 you know, symbolic gestures rather than real systemic change. Yeah. Um, Hiding the bad things away with uh, camera tricks and whatever, like we see with homelessness in the United States. Which wow, is the first trans woman uh, uh, intelligence agency officer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like, precisely. The, the more female drone pirate pilots kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really symbolic gestures of something's really going to change now. We're we're really on to it. We've, we've listened to you. And look, we've listened yeah. to you so much. We've got someone who understood the struggles firsthand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel you on but, that. But the system has to continue. Yeah. Um, and so you can, I, I don't believe it's wrong to, you know, vote or support people, um, you know, support various candidates and, mm -hmm. you know, as far, you know, support is a super vague term that doesn't mean much of anything, but, you know, you can, there are, there are some things that are better for some politicians than others. They are not literally the same people. And at the same time, I think the other big thing I picked up from anarchism is the, the lack of belief in electoralism. Mm -hmm. um, I and, and so I want to be really clear every time I say that someone wants to say that I don't think you should vote. And that's not what I think. What well, we've I mean had is, this conversation on this stream many times. My audience should know better. Electoralism, meaning organizing around elections and electoral candidates and, and that being your focus, mm -hmm. you know, you want to go there, try to draw some people away. Like, Hey, what can you do? Um, so I think that the state does a really, really good job of making it feel like they're the, um, legitimate wielders of politics. Mm -hmm. Like politics is who you vote for, but like, why isn't stopping cops from evicting people politics? Why isn't, uh, uh, you know, stolen cops, filming cops when they're, you know, pulling someone over, stopping someone, you know, why isn't, uh, uh, community gardens and, 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 and housing, you know, trying to build little homes and stuff as much, you know, if you can for like yeah. homeless people, like, why aren't, you know, why are these any less politics than who you vote for? What right. political party you've decided to attach yourself to? Yeah. Um, I think helping, you know, helping each other as best you can being, 
there for one another, uh, you know, keeping the lowest of the low, um, you know, surviving is way more, way more useful, you know, mm -hmm. a way more useful place to put your time and money. Yep. Um, I, I guess those are so much on that. a lot of the big ones for things I've picked up from anarchism. Um, I don't know. I'm nothing else is really. Oh, that's fine. That's screaming a, that's out in my really brain. Great answer. And like, I mean, this is something I've, I've talked about a lot on this channel as well. Is that like, um, you know, one of the most like people don't people think that like oh you know, it, like giving food to someone is like oh, oh you know people it seems, on, on one hand it's almost like our society has made that boring, and yet on the other hand you think about it, it's like you've literally sustained a life for another day and who knows what they might do on that next day who who knows what might happen they might go to save somebody else they might find a way to feed themselves that day like so there is something truly radical about reaching out and making connections with people and saying how do we help each other what can we act how can we meet each other's needs so that both of us can be alive for another day or another week or another year etc cetera, etc cetera. and these are the sorts of things that that like similar to you and i think we are on a similar page on a lot of these things motivates my political philosophy mm -hmm. um i am you know i'm much less interested in the um the sort of positioning and 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 um posturing that's involved with you know large political orgs and whatnot and i'm much more interested in okay well how do i stop all the trans people i know from not being able to get hrt how do we fix mm -hmm. that um can we find a way to send them hrt can we find a way to uh pick a politician who is it coming to a pivotal vote and annoy them and get them to change this vote so that it brings this many more people stuff. Can we, you know, there's a million ways to do it. And I do, I do. Uh, it's funny because like this concept of electoralism, I feel like people have used that word so incorrectly. Like electoralism isn't when you vote. Electoralism is when you, when you build your politics around getting people into office and electoralism. I don't believe in electoralism. <laughs> like, I don't believe that, that, that the answers to all of our problems comes from, showing up to the ballot every couple months i think the solution to most of our problems comes from us sitting down and talking to one another and going okay what can we do for each other what can we make happen what is your vision is your vision inspiring to me okay here i'll lend my skills to your vision etc things like that you know what i mean like those are the sorts of things that are important to me and that's that's what like i'm i'm happy to hear that like or at least it, it it it's it's nice to hear that a lot of those things are what inspires you as well because that's a lot of the draw to anarchistic philosophy that inspires myself as well. Um, real quick, I think because we've been going for a while, I want to see if Sansol wants to jump in because I feel like this would be a good point. Are you cool with that? I I'm like absolutely. It blends pretty smoothly. Yeah. Can I say three things? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so really quick to Rivera life and chat. Uh, yeah, I made it really 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 clear that I don't believe the parties are exactly the same, and it does. Like who you vote for is not irrelevant. It's just, you know, uh, not the answer. Um, two, uh, the question on policing, um, I, it was super vague, depending on the anarchist that you 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 talk to, um, an anarchist approach to policing is, um, calling it that is a little hard, like it's not quite right. Like it's, the entire idea is like voluntary societies based on free association, the ability to organize with one another freely, and uh, you are only bound to the things that you've agreed upon with the other people in the communities and the stuff that you're with. Like, it's all like super, like, so like policing would, like if someone dies, are we gonna try to figure out like who did it? Yeah, probably like it's, you know, if someone gets murdered, like the, there's, there's still probably, uh, you know, people Detectives that would want whatever. to look for that stuff, but like, would it be uh, policing? Are there laws? Like, no, like, it's not like you go over the speed limit and there's laws. It's not like, you know, there's drug laws or something like that. No, no, it's all like communicative agreement based on small organizations, essentially. Yeah. Um, it, it, and the way then, I see it when it comes to stuff like this, um, and maybe you will agree with this, I don't know, is like, um, is like my goal when I think about how you build like what we would recognize as government in an anarchistic way would be to say, hey, like, maybe we should aim to, like, 
teach people to understand why it's dangerous to speed in in like a residential area so that they're they're willing they're they're likely to choose that on their own versus if you do this thing we're going to destroy your life with a fee that's going to make it so that you can't pay your next bill like etc cetera, etc cetera. or go even more systemic than that why does everyone own their own car okay like, yes I, I mean yes 100 <laughs> percent. yeah like like the fact that they're that that it's designed to be and i don't think this is an intentional design but designed to be individually uh uh like if it's a problem that people speed a lot, maybe there's something deeper. Maybe it's, you know, yeah. how our roads are designed, how our, like there's stuff that's there's a little bit bigger stuff, maybe but like it's it, the fact that everybody's always rushing and doesn't to, have a lot of time. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, all sorts of things like that. Yeah. People probably shouldn't own their own cars. That seems silly. Um, Very damaging. Can I read you one quote and then we'll please get do. on to the, please do. so this yes. is Marx. Um, and I really like this line. So Marx, not an anarchist, but, um, I like this here. Um, so he says, uh, now, yeah, he says, only when the real individual man reabsorbs in himself the abstract citizen and uh, as an individual human being has become a species being in his everyday life, in his particular work and his particular situation, only when man has recognized and organized his own powers as social powers and consequently no longer separates social power from himself in the shape of political power only then will human emancipation have been accomplished. And I like that quote a lot. I feel um, that like having this thing abstracted away from us, this, this political being mm -hmm. that's so separate from us, it feels very, it, politics becomes a game almost. It's symbols clashing with symbols rather than what am I doing? What are the people around me doing? How do we do this together? How do we figure out how to, because we have to live together. How do we figure it out? What do we do together? Yeah. And I think that's part of like, I mean, I mean, especially here in the U.S., like this, this sort of uh, categorizing of politics as the thing that you see happen on the TV and not like how you choose to live your life and how you engage with your community, how your community engages with you is so frustrating. It's a frustrating <laughs> uh, standard. Um, so yeah, I think that is a fantastic quote that you've brought here. Now, um, one second, I'm going to pull you off the screen for a second so I can navigate through my discord without dropping any, uh, DMs. Yeah, sure. I am, uh, going to run to the bathroom really quick. That's perfectly fine. Oh, I got to give, uh, I got to give Lexi, um, fancy name, fancy name. Here we go. Notable. Blammo. Done. Here we go. Bingy, 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 bingy. Uh, oh, oops. I have to. Oh, wait, I have to. How did that happen? Uh oh, uh oh. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. How's everyone doing over on YouTube chat? Hi, YouTube chat. Hi. Hope you're doing well. How you doing well? Hope, hope you're doing well, I should say. Had some anarchist undertones? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I mean, keep in mind that, like, Marx and, like, these are the primordial leftist principles. The terms we use today are only connected to them. I mean, they're connected to them via the evolution of ideas. It's not like, I mean, a lot of these concepts are shared between various thinkers who are building off of one another and uh, one another and reacting to one another and wording their things differently. Yeah. For sure. Um actually, you know what? I am going to use the restroom as well while I have an opportunity. Give me one second. Chair stream for just a minute. Much love to all of you. I'll be right back, okay? Oh yeah. When Lexi comes back, tell her to accept my friend request on uh, on Discord. Chat, it's up to you. I'll be right back.
Wait, can chat hear me? Oh, fuck, you guys can. What's up? This is my stream now. Taking over. You can't see me because I put on the ring, so sorry. <laughs> kind of. I have returned. I have returned. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let me fix this shit. Uh, excuse you. I took over your stream. You did? Did you? Did you have a good time? <laughs> yeah, for all about five seconds. Okay. Uh, yes, my my chair spoke. I told you it was going to be a, a very advanced chair stream. Yeah, can you accept um, my friend request real oh. quick? Because I want to yeah, be, yeah, if sorry. I have to be your friend in order to add uh, Sansol to this call so we can. Uh, I didn't realize that. There you go. Ch chat. No, that's totally fine. Let me get Sansol in here. All righty. Yeah, this is an. Oops. Sorry. No, you're good. Hold on one second. It might have to. It might have to reactivate camera. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Let me get this all. Wait a minute. How do I. Turn off the camera on my stream. One second. Okay. I yeah, if you can't that. do camera, it's fine. Um, but... No, I can. Okay, cool. How do I? What the fuck? God damn it! There we go. Okay, this will this will work. All right. Boom and whammo blammo. Here hello. I am. Hello. Rocky like a hurricane. Excellent. Well, hello. Um, so hold on, I'm gonna need to adjust my guest box thing here. So, oh, I like it over my face. It looks good. No, I, that's not. Oh, no, that's no good. <laughs> Here we go. Hold on. I gotta. I gotta have both. How do I do this shit? Oh my god. How am I gonna format this? Give me a second. It's gotta be. I like your uh, lighting, Sansol. Is that oh, is that how you want to be referred to? Yeah, Sansol, or you can call me Walt. Either way, Walt, doesn't matter. Sansol. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. How am I gonna? Uh, I should probably Sansol. duplicate this thing. I should have thought of this in advance. Hmm. Stand up for the trans flag. Hell yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I need to add oh a second God. one. Here we go. Where's the text? Jesus Christ. Uh, okay, let me just do this real quick. Sansol, do you have a Twitter? Uh, I do have a Twitter. Oh, there um, you are. Based yeah. I'm following at, you. At Sansol. That's, that's, it's your boy. Um, oh yeah, you were in that tweet. I literally retweeted your ad. I'm sorry, I'm stupid. Ignore me. <laughs> it, it's totally fine. Like I, I, I do not care that much about Twitter. Although I finally met the, uh, you know, I'm no longer at a negative ratio uh, after the after the charity stream. We got we got me up to uh, above a 1.0. So damn. Also, real Proud quick, uh, pronoun Sunsol? Uh He him. Okay. There we go. Alrighty, so, let me um, just uh, let me just get this thing resized because currently it's so large that it's it's actually consuming my entire screen, and this is incredibly scuffed. Um, so let's try and let's try and fix this. Uh, is it because it's minimized? What the fuck? There Hello. We go. Hello. Hold on. There we go. And here we go. We'll Reshrink this. All right. So <laughs> this is uh. This is the the anarcho pill, pill uh, session of the of the chat. So um, I hope everyone's ready. I am going to be taking a, a little bit of a back seat in this part, although I'm sure I have plenty of things to add. But from what I understand, Sansol has come into contact with anarchism and just isn't convinced. And I said, "Well, damn, I could probably put you into contact with somebody who could help you with that better than I could." Um, although I think I can make a good case from time to time, but I think Lexi can make a better case. So, All right, cool. let's have it really happen. Really quick, um, yes. Let me let me ask uh, you guys for your pronouns. My chat is wondering. Yep. Uh, Wait, Shana. are you streaming? I am. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, hold on. I want to go follow you. Are you on Twitch or on YouTube? Uh, I'm on Twitch. Okay. Okay. So yeah, no slurs, everybody. We gotta be nice. <laughs> Listen, this isn't your nor. This isn't. We've got a Twitcher on here, so we gotta be nice. We got. We gotta go back to the. Back to the nice gumdrop days when I used to be on Twitch before I used. I'm gonna make the jump eventually too. Uh, I just have to get to a, a point where I feel like I can do that. Um, also, enough. are we doing the the World of Warcraft at the same time? Or um, I don't believe what I would do be you? able to do that. Let's let's do that another time. Uh, World of Warcraft okay. is an incredibly intense setup experience, so I will have to talk <laughs> with you about that. Uh, uh, yeah, that's hard to do on stream. It would not be very no, fun for most fine. people. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
So yeah, let's um once everybody's all comfy and whatnot, let's let's begin. And uh, Sansol, I'll let you sort of lay out the groundwork for where you want to start with this, because I know you got a lot of questions and whatever and stuff that you, you could explain where your position is, what problems you had, and then we'll address it from there. Yeah, so um, basically, I am a, a baby leftist, you know, I am. Um... Lost you. You cut out. Yeah, you're muted. Push to talk, maybe? Uh oh. Are you still coming through on your stream? No, nothing. Nothing. Can you hear us, though? Okay. Weird. Maybe a driver. The CIA crash? got the CIA him. Oh my gotcha. god. They knew. <laughs> they knew we were going to get you. And they were like, this is it. This is the only way to stop them now. Okay, sure. Dun 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 dun. Ha cha cha ha cha cha. I can keep you entertained. That's <laughs> oh, all right. It's all good. There we go. Nope. Nothing. Sounds like maybe your audio drivers crash or something. Or maybe did you accidentally tap your uh, push to mute or your toggle mute? No. Oh. oh. Yep. Okay, now we can. You're back. Hear you. All right. Awesome. All right. There we go. Perfect. Alrighty. So I'm a baby leftist. Okay, yeah. Um I probably um I I feel weird trying to um uh throw myself in a box because whenever I like try and do that, people try and um make me try make me defend things that I don't actually believe in because you know, that's the way of the world. Um sure. but I think that I'm like teetering on the edge between um like uh sock dim and uh dim sock right uh, i i feel um like weird about that but what i am interested in is learning about the like different leftist ideologies i kind of want to in the future um take the knowledge that i get from conversations like this and uh kind of be like the kindergarten for leftism because i'm in kindergarten right now i'm learning about sure, this sure. stuff right mm -hmm. so um uh, if the, the way that I've been explained, um, anarchism and like, an, like left anarchism and not ANCAP because you know, not um, anarchists, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, posers, uh, is yeah, they're feudalists, yes. um, is basically, uh, no hierarchies and, um, that's basically it. I've been explained, uh, some basic concepts, um, that don't really, it just sounds very utopian. Um, like the, the way that we would do, uh, criminal justice. Um, uh, uh do you know Graugot? Uh, I've talked to Graugot before. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm I like, I, I, yeah, I like him a lot, but the way that he described like the, the justice system, like if like we can reform people, that's good. And I agree with that. But then like, if someone it can't be reformed, then we would just like kind of send them off to like their own private Island. And I feel like that's, um, like, uh exile and i don't like the idea of that so um maybe we can start off like in a like in a nutshell how would you describe left anarchism and um maybe i can because i don't know what i don't know at this point is the thing yeah of course you know? um okay so i'll do my best um so starting off i suppose okay so um there's a fun thing i say with some of my um my actual anarchist friends. Um, I don't, I only like pseudo consider myself one kind of, but it's not important. Um, the, the main, the, the joke is that there's no way to describe anarchism that doesn't leave out or that does leave out all the ones that we don't like and only includes the ones that we like, like the, 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 you know, sub branches of it. But mm -hmm. the best way that I could, could condense it is, um, the abolition of all coercive institutions, and the um and so just to be clear uh, I'm, I'm going for the ideal of anarchy we'll get into anarchism in a second um so the ideal of anarchy being the abolition of all coercive institutions and the um uh a society built on um free agreement between people free organization between them 
you know, that's self-directed, self-organized, um, without the imposition, without being able to put impositions on others. Um, okay. I think that's probably the broadest way that I can say it. Um, with anarchism being the the philosophy of how to get there. So a big anarchist critique um, throughout history has been a critique of um, how um, means and ends, right? You have what you're trying to get to and you have how you wanna do it. And these are related. That's the big critique is like how you get to what you want is directly defined by how you attempt to do it. So for example, if you're trying to build, um, you good? Yeah. Okay, I'm I just looking, want to make sure. Sorry, yeah. I was no. You seem like you were like looking at somebody. I want to make sure you were okay. Um, oh no, I have I have my screens all over the place over here. Oh, okay, my bad, my bad. Um, uh, what are they saying? Fuck. Um, How you get to somewhere is yeah. important. So, like for example, um, if you want to get to like a stateless society, and yet you also want to simultaneously build the same bureaucratic state institutions that have always been there to get there, well. How, yeah, you're, how are you going to? How do is that, that yeah. going to get there? Like these institutions can't possibly force themselves to death. Like they can't kill themselves. That's not a thing that institutions do. Um, another way in which this was described, um, some anarchists talked about violence. Right? Violence is a, it's in our society. It's all around us. It happens mm -hmm. to us, and only when it's out of place do we usually call it violence right like getting right, murdered is you know violence but self-defense we wouldn't necessarily call violence or even the state evicting people right like this is a direct threat on someone's life essentially like they they're on the street that that's that's it's big it's violence right there well, of course and yeah. so they understand that well the the idea is that the that it in itself is um a necessity for for a necessity a, a a mainstay of you know modern life and also necessary to get rid of it like you can't feel good your way out of like violence right if there's societal violence as much as we might wish that we could cross our fingers and you know peacefully get rid of it mm -hmm. if the system is corrupt and the system is held in place by um individuals means, who in, and... yeah individuals who would, who use violent means and will protect their power and position with violent means the only real option to transcend that system and move beyond it is violent means but at the yeah, same time they want to apologies if that if anybody okay. else heard that apologies. I, I don't think i heard it oh, okay it's probably on my end i don't know why um at the same time they wanted to be clear that like the overuse of violence um there was no reason to overdo it essentially like mm -hmm. it often opened up doors for for um like centralizing and 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 retaliatory um violence by like the state they may mm -hmm. have you know like like if you if you go if, i don't know how to describe this well there are certain ways in which you can enact violence against different groups and and the state and and industries in which they will respond in you know tenfold um, to make sure that you don't do it again. Um, yeah. So when when we're talking about like violence inherent in the system, um, like we can look at a, a a specific instance in the past couple of days in Portland, there was um, eviction of homeless people out of mm -hmm. a home that was not being. Um, used right mm -hmm. and um i i would agree like i i don't like that sort of thing right um so uh, uh in like an anarchist this is one thing that i um i am always curious about when it comes to like leftist ideology mm -hmm. when we're talking about like decommodifying housing right mm -hmm. um i think that the idea of that is really cool the implementation of it is something that really um confuses me because some houses are really nice some houses are 
really not right and um i want to make sure that everyone is housed but how do we decide who gets the nicer houses and who how do we decide who gets the the shittier houses how do we decide um you know like it it would be based off of need but um when when we like decide you know if someone has like a family of like uh eight kids right and it's a single mom you're gonna need a bigger house but do they need the the giant mansion in um in hollywood hills or you know like just like a modest sized house that can fit eight people like that's the sure. kind of thing that i, I would what you mean. um yeah um so i would try to tackle that so we can talk about now um mm -hmm. the way houses are built um they are designed and built and paid for and like it's all like the <laughs> The way you build like a like a um, beachfront house, you know, a multi-million dollar beachfront house, it's not really how you build almost any other structure. It's super weird. It's a very mm -hmm. obscure, like it's obscure is not quite the right word, but it's very strange. Unique, yeah. I, you like, you like, have to have yeah, it up like, on fields and stuff. There's still yeah. to have time to like, there's fucking windows as walls, the whole like for the whole mm -hmm. building. It's a very strange design in general, but I, th I think trying to decide who gets what in that sense is a little less like, would it be a problem? Maybe, but I think that the thing that, that would be more useful to focus on would be how to, how to do what's next, right? Like how do you ensure that, that, that the next house is built continue to, to, you know, provide the needs for people like the most likely scenario for 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 housing is that it would a it's going to change significantly we're getting you know population no, course, might yeah. continue to increase they might have to have to go denser with stuff you know maybe those kinds of houses would be even be turned into you know not homes they're barely homes that they're fortresses sometimes like the mansions are insane like they're yeah, crazy yeah, they're um and so yeah, How you would the, choose who gets those is, is a little difficult. Like there's the, you know, if you go, if you're like Stalinist era, um, you've got your, your homelessness was a problem. And so they built really tall, really easy to build, brutalist style apartment buildings, essentially. Right. They were shitty. They didn't leave lit, you know, they weren't, they weren't great. But people stopped being, you know, this one homeless which was better than nothing how you decide it mostly it would be in general which is like i know this is all super vague but people all owning together so um oftentimes the the word is um you know private property becoming public property would be like on the way to socialism or socialism itself depending on lots of definitions of different things you know the, that that the means of production and property itself becomes, you know, a public thing that we all, you know, determine together. Um, this is often used to justify like state ownership of, of, of the means of production and, um, you know, property, housing, stuff in general. But the real goal is like the abolition of that property, right? Like, like the, the, the ability, I, I call it, equal and free access to all the means of life subsistence and comfort like yeah so and, and if i could take a yeah, swing at this as well there's sure. some things yeah. i think i could i could add on to here so i tend to be uh less of a like theorist you know and more of like okay well here's some cool ideas um that we could probably work towards right now and when we talk about like oh how do we decide who gets what well to me that's an almost irrelevant question at the current moment because right now as it currently stands we have hundreds of thousands of americans dying on the street and empty properties just sitting completely vacant vacant and what i would say to that is that um our like like our society is built is designed in such a way currently our, our housing system is designed in such a way currently that um by the the the, the sort of uh mansions and etc and all these things um being held vacant in order to raise their property value you know everything from these incredibly complex systems like airbnb and blah 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 um like these are 
existing at the cost of us having hundreds of thousands pe of people living on the street already currently. If we change that, we say, this is not an acceptable cost. Um, instead, we need to put people in houses so they can take care of themselves, whether that's by... There's a number of paths you can take to that. Um, one such path is, say you live in a really shitty, like, like 1970s, um, almost Stalinesque um, housing unit, but it's in America, and people like to pretend those mm -hmm. don't exist here. But anyway, say you live in one of those, and everybody is like, wow, our landlord has basically fucked off in the middle of this um, entire thing, and we've decided that we live here, they're not maintaining it anymore, we're going to make it ours, and we're going to talk to one another and figure out what we need to fix and what we can do and what everyone needs here, and we're all going to stop paying rent. And then there might be a legal battle. You might get the police come. Depends on the state. There's a whole bunch of different things that could happen. But that's one way that all of a sudden you have a community of people who live on that property who now collectively own that property that they live in and that they need and use. There you have it. Those people are there living there, needing and using it. Um, and all what we need to do is say, hey, we collectively as the United States or as whatever level you want to break it down to. I would say if we're going to go really far, ideally you can say, well, we don't need a United States. We can talk about how communities can build themselves and organize on a much more organic level. But for now we can say we're not okay with the state kicking people out. We're not okay with the state enforcing the uh, deeds of ownership that were previously accepted, which enforced houselessness on a lot of people and so that's one way that i would look at a, at like ha, at like how like anarchistic thinking about housing is saying wait a second well sure we can deal with beachfront properties and figuring out who gets which house sometime in the future um ideally the fact of the matter is that beachfront property is um really damaging to the environment so there might be reasons we might not want to do beachfront properties anymore if you really want to maybe there can be some like agreement between the town and the person who wants to be there like say you have like a a, a bard an artist who's amazing and you're like oh we really love you want to come live in our town we've all agreed that we're okay with you building your fancy house on our beach and we'll even help you build it and then they're like okay there you go everybody agreed and now fancy artist has cool house on beach and the the people around it who you know previously lived there are fine with it that's really cool um and that can be done um, the only reason it can't be done right now is because we have a state that will step in and cave your head in with a truncheon if you do anything other than pay your bill on time. So that's mm -hmm. that's a pretty major cost that we take. But we but the thing is, we build ultimately we build the structures that we live in. So if we can convince enough of us that hey, maybe having like mass houselessness as an accepted casualty of the system isn't okay, we can start changing the way we think about housing in general. And then in as downstream of that, we can start thinking about how we, how we determine, um, you know, how we arrange systems for distributing housing to different people. And for your, to address your specific example, Sansal, that you brought up at the beginning, it's like, oh, what do you have a person with eight, eight family members? Well, let's say, uh, here's just a possible one. And this isn't the only possible system. There's many possible systems you could design. It all depends on the principles that you're building it on, right? One thing that I've talked about in the past is imagine yourself, um, imagine a future in which um, instead of having, you know, property title deeds that individual people hold and they're backed up by the state, um, instead we as a society agree that, well, all property is going to be mutually managed and owned by the people who live there. So if you move, if you are in a place, there's a vacancy in that place and you say, hey, I'd like to move here. I'm like, okay, come on in. You can modify your place. You can take care of your place. There might be specific rules there that they say, like, hey, you want to live here? We're going to agree on these rules, blah, blah, blah. All kinds of things you could talk about. Millions of different systems you could do. But you could have these essentially communities that are of themselves um, sort of independent. They take care of themselves. Their goal is to perpetuate the housing. And the people who live there have an, a vested interest in that because they live there. It's their space. Um, and, um, and, you know, when you leave, uh, you know, you, the idea, the ideal would be, of course, depending on how far along you are in other forms of, um, you know, changing our system, maybe you don't even need to pay rent to live there. Um, one of the problems that we have right now, and the reason why I think this is a, something important to think about is like, 
um, consider the problem of the renter. A renter currently every single month pays $1,000 into a property that they lose the moment they move. No matter how mm -hmm. much money you've sunk into your, your, your um, you don't get a refund, you don't get anything. You just leave and all that money has been just gravy for the person who owns the property. It's purely parasitic. And, and sometimes it can be de extremely destructive. You spend years of your income paying into a place, uh, you get sick, lose your job, and you get kicked out of a place that you've sustained personally for years. So this is not, a, in my mind, this is not an acceptable system that we have. And I would like to see a structure where, hey, if you're paying into a place, well then, maybe that goes into, maybe say you pay rent every month. Let's say we still have money in our system or wages or whatever. Mm -hmm. You pay money every month. It goes into, well, we'll get there. But let's just say we still do, okay? I don't want to tackle too many things at once. Let's say you still do. And uh, for some, you know, and whatever you pay your your wages into this community thing, and perhaps a percentage of all of that, a large percentage, goes into a fund. And as long as you keep living there as a part of that fund, you're entitled to a certain percentage of that fund. And when you leave, you get that money back. And if 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 issues come up while you're there, that money can go towards fixing the issue of the house, and also you know making sure you don't trash the place because your money is being held in that way. Obviously, this is not a perfect anarchist system, but this is certainly an improvement from where we are currently, as you can see. And it moves towards people actually having ownership over the place that they have, unlike right now, which is every single person is basically hooked into a perpetual soul-sucking machine that takes money away from you every single month for something that you will never see a, a cent from or anything back from. You leave, you're gone. Yeah. Yeah. The, the the idea that we have like uh, a lot of people that uh, don't have homes um, mm -hmm. really uh, irks me. I mean, like to to use like softer language, um, I think that it's not a great thing. Um, but I, I think that we need to find at least some way. Like one of the things that um, I find really difficult when trying to engage with like leftist ideas mm -hmm. sure. is um, I'm a very um, pragmatic person. Sure. I want to do things that are actionable within my lifetime. I think that there are things that we can do within my lifetime to um, fix the housing system, possibly decommodify it. But I think that that's um, a big stretch. Um, really quick, I did want to... Um, uh, this is like a very basic anarchist question that someone in my uh, chat asked. Yeah, um, anarchism, the rejection of all forms of uh, all forms such of hierarchical government. Is that right or 180 percent wrong? So basically no hierarchical government. Um, so there wouldn't be like a, a head of state. Um, would there even be a I guess if it's anarchism, there wouldn't be a government, right? Oh, you're muted. I'm muted. I'm okay. so sorry. I was okay. typing and it might have a really clicky clacky keyboard. And I didn't want to bother. Mm -hmm. uh, so some descriptions of anarchism, ones that I think are wrong, are ones that say uh, that it's the abolition of the state, but maybe not the abolition of government. I think that it's only useful to describe it as both. It's the abolition of the state and the government and any institution that has coercive powers over others, the um, uh, uh, the ability to, you know, impose one's will on another being is mm -hmm. an antithetical to anarchism. Um, I, uh, I I understand the um, I understand the the the, the, the pragmatism the. Mm -hmm. I want things that I can do now. And and so I've often criticized um, big communist parties for, um, uh, I often feel like a lot of people, a lot of groups are very interested in um, promising the next world. Um, but people already get like promised all sorts of stuff that doesn't get, um, ever enacted. And I think it's far more useful to, as these organizations um, describe themselves as a, um, describe themselves, uh, to, to organize themselves around like directly affecting the actual lives of people. Like that's how you get people on your side. If you look at like the big lefty movements of the past 20th century, 
that's how you got people on your side. The Black Panther movement, that was one of the big things was feeding children, you know, organizing communities, being, you know, teaching people how to be armed and safe with it so that they, you know, would stop getting fucked around by the cops. Um, like that was the goal. It was how do you help the people who needed it? What do you do? How do you organize your own, you know, your your powers yourself to to directly materially benefit the people around you, your communities, you know, the, the, the people, the lowest of the low. And while I don't think it's like wrong to, um, you know, of course, try, try for some, you know, we, we've got a state right now. Um, there's clearly not a, um, <laughs> we've had some pretty big uprisings, but they weren't like destroying the state uprisings. They were angry right. people in the streets and they wanted change and and they did some cool stuff. They, you know, took over a a, 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 a police station and burned it down. Like they there was a clear rejection of of, you know, it was an explosive violence. It was an explosive response. And yet they didn't like kill anybody. Like it was all like you know they, Yeah, there was no one in the police station. Yeah, yeah it's not like they were yeah. like trying to murder people or something. It was that wasn't the goal. The goal was explosive anti uh uh uh, 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 uh anti police and and like sure like, yeah against I would the say state. yeah against the entire like there was a system that was clearly hurting them and they organized a loose organization a very um abrupt organization i would say to push back and mm -hmm. to sort of answer your question in a the, the previous question in a lot uh less words it would be when the society and the people of a society understand that they themselves are the products of society and that they need society um, and that it doesn't make any sense for individuals to own pieces of society, then instead mm -hmm. this is something that we just need for each other, that you would come to some agreement with each other on what to do with the pieces of it. So. There's already big, you know, big ass houses that exist. What do we do with them? We'll come together. We live here. We'll talk about it. Is it going to be extra homes? You know, in the meantime, while we're building, you know, extra home places because they're huge. There's a thousand fucking rooms in them. Are you know, are we going to be able to, you know, put people there so they can sleep in a, you know, heated, warm place at night? Are we going to, to, you know, while we're in the process of, you know, building new housing around them, it would mostly be an agreement between the people around it, understanding their own position. And you understand your own position through your, your um, organization and action around it. So like, for example, um, you might, if you're politically you know, active and you wanna help people and you're in these communities and you see the pain, you might, say, okay, well, I've got two parties to choose from and I can spend my time signing people up to vote, you know, registering them, driving them to the, to the, to the polling places and the, you know, you know, getting them ballots and, and, and all sorts of this, you know, all, all sorts of stuff. And you might even demonstrate against some of the politicians, you know, directly, you know, outside of their work or home or whatever, and say mm -hmm. like, we demand housing like there's a homelessness problem it has to be fixed and through enough of that not happening um it would um you start to realize what has to be done right you start to realize like you slowly start to build a little bit of consciousness here of like okay well if it can't get done this way what has to be done what are the what are the things preventing it from being done how do we remove our obstacles so that we can provide the basic necessities of life and yeah sometimes eventually it comes... yeah. yeah eventually it gets to a point where like if you um it it kind of comes down to that uh martin luther king quote where like uh, a riot is the language of the unheard mm -hmm. um like if you keep on um not fixing the underlying problem people are going to get um, people are going to get pissed they're going to they're going to do some shit that leads Explosive. to another riot right mm -hmm. and we've seen and this is something i've told uh conservatives that come into my chat a lot like um especially during the protests 
we we see uh, an issue, people protest against that issue. The protests explode into um, uh, into violence, burning down police stations, right? And then people calm down, right? And we try and enact change in the system, and then change doesn't happen. Tension builds and it explodes, right? So if we don't ever un like fix the underlying issue, the the cycle of these protests and these riots are going to continue until the underlying issue is solved, right? Um, I and I think that I agree with that um, wholeheartedly. Um, uh, d one one thing that I worry about, like when we talk about um, changing. I mean, it's not just an economic system. It's also a social system. It's um, it's changing everything that we think about as society today. Radical. You know, yeah, yeah, that it's pretty, um... ra it's pretty radical, bro. <laughs> I mean, but, and, but um, seriously, that's what we talk. Yeah. That's why these are called and... radical philosophies. They're talking about changing the root of it. Mm -hmm. And and before we move on to another topic, I would love yeah. to hop in and and have and share some thoughts on both of the things that you asked about, both the sort of definition of anarchy, which, I mean, definitions are useful, I, I think, obviously, but I don't know that it's actually possible to define something as broad as anarchy. I think there's sort of people have their own visions of it. Um, but the way that I, the way that I look at it um, is that, um, like, like I, I and, and this is actually something that's come up and and came up in a in a free previous conversation I'd had and I was hoping to 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 at some point get to fire this one at you, Lexi. But um, the way I look at anarchy is is and the way I focus on it is um, rethinking the structures that we build in such a way that um, when we build a structure we build it so that it doesn't perpetuate hierarchies. Um, largely politically. Um, I think that some people um, take, this is something that drives me absolutely batty, is when people go like, well, don't you think that parents should be able to talk, like grab their kid if they're going to get run over? I'm like, that's not a political hierarchy. That's like, we can go that far, but that's stretching the definition of, pi of hierarchy in my mind. Um, but what I think of when I think of anarchy is like, okay, our current our current system and whether this and again um whether it means no government or a, a different type of government is a little bit less important to me um versus like how does the society function and um like when i think of of, of anarchic systems and anarchic structures these are structures that are designed um to facilitate um and to encourage a specific like 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 a, like a way of living that's beneficial to people so and, and doesn't involve putting people under now if, if that that can be a little bit um vague perhaps but i can give some examples of this like our current system right now is so hierarchical so deeply hierarchical that it's sometimes like like you have to almost like take a second and induce some sort of political dissociation for a moment to even imagine like to even see how hierarchical our systems is we're obsessed with it every single day we're we, you know we talk about who are we electing to lead us um who is our boss who's the person who gets to tell us what our schedule is who's the person who gets to tell us where we get to go when we go to school which teacher is going to be giving us orders now you know well, who's the one above them who gives them the orders and stuff like that but i don't mm -hmm. think that's necessarily the only way to structure a society nor do i think it's the only way to structure even a government or something that would be largely referred to as government i tend to think um a lot of times people get hung up on certain parts of the semantics that don't matter as much and um whether whether you want to consider like um something like a um an agreement between two um communities that live in the same geographic area as a government or not um is not really important to me what matters to me is that the structure that facilitates their relationship is one that doesn't put one of them over the other one um intrinsically or or at all like for example think of a think of how like um two communities could come together there's like just whatever imagine whatever time period you want to you got two communities that are like this one of them has one resource the other one has another resource and they want to work together to share their resources well one way they could do it is they could kill all of the other ones enslave them and then take the resource for themselves which would be terrible and could have some pretty bad outcomes like for example maybe you don't kill all of them and their kids 
go off to another land, train up in the sword, and come back and kick your fucking ass next. And then you have then their kids, and it goes on forever. I mean, and that's a lot of human history is just a cycle of violence. It's one person fucked over somebody else, so that person decided we're going to fuck you over, and then that person decides they're going to fuck over, and then somebody else gets fucked over, and they all fuck each other over. And instead of acknowledging, wait a minute, actually, we're all stuck on a rock in space— and it, we might kill ourselves if we keep doing it this way. So maybe we should approach this with a different approach. Like, for example, you have a resource I want. I have a resource you want. How do we build something that says, hey, let's share this resource in a way that doesn't put either one of us over the other? And um, in my mind, like being someone who thinks about, you know, what I advocate for and how we can get there in a pragmatic way, because I'm also very, you know, pragmatic, but I like to imagine that I have some dreams and visions and whatnot. Um, the way that I think about it is like, um, if we're going to build a system at all, if we're going to build an institution, if we're going to, um, set up a government for whatever reason, um, we should do so with the, with the goal of that system, minimizing the amount of power any single individual can have and, or any single group or faction. And that does take some, um, nuance you know what i mean and that's why there's a need for specialization and knowledge and whatnot but we've seen these sort of things happen in in certain areas of tech for example like um certain open source communities have had great success um building like low hierarchy or no hierarchy structures that perpetuate themselves very well the problem that we have right now is that it's hard to get to that state in the first place because the hierarchies are designed to self-perpetuate by keeping people out of them, by controlling people. And so sometimes those things have to be challenged and broken or or abolished or whatever. And those could, that can be a hard process. But what I think is that I think there are ways that we can organize society that don't have the same weaknesses that our current system has. Again, like we talked about with the landlords. Can you imagine if we could snap our fingers overnight and just say, okay, landlords are you're all gonna no one's gonna be hurt or killed or whatever you're just gonna be not a landlord anymore and you still get all the whatever stuff you want you know obviously maybe you won't have all your wealth piled up like scrooge mcduck so you can swim through it but instead it will be you know you're taken care of you're fine all of our housing systems all across the united states overnight just magically became cooperatively owned whoa, wait a second, that totally changes the dynamic of like a fuckload of this country instantly. That solves a whole lot of other problems. All of a sudden, you don't have the problem of evictions anymore because you don't need to evict people because the system, the structure, no longer includes evictions as a part of its function. So when I think of radical change and pragmatic radical change, I think, okay, well, what are things that we can start to, um, to fix um, that would be, that would solve problems immediately and lead to those problems not f c perpetuating themselves. Again, if everybody has a home, hey, guess what? You also just solved the problem of, like, homeless people breaking into homes to sleep in, like, owned properties. You fix that problem. That problem is gone. It won't be a problem anymore. So you don't have to worry. Like, some people will be like, oh, well, you know, in, in communism, like— the, the government will take your stuff and then you don't have a toothbrush and then you'll need to steal somebody's toothbrush. And it's like, well, what happens if if you just distributed toothbrushes to everyone, then no one would need to steal toothbrushes because you like no. think of think of like uh, like like, yeah, think of like think of like this. This is one of the things that makes me go fucking nuts is like if you go into a grocery store right now, you look at the beginning of it. Uh, you look at the front of the grocery store and they have toothbrushes, razors. Um, and usually alcohol and soap sometimes and feminine hygiene products in a cage in the front where there's usually yeah. like a guard near it. And you just, you look at that and you go, well, wait a minute. And it's like, well, what are we going to do if we, if, you know, if you just made these products free, well, you know, there, or if we, we, we did to socialism, then what? Everybody would just like get these products. It's like, yeah. And guess what? You wouldn't have to have a cage and a guard at the front of your store either. It solves another problem at the same time. There are problems that only exist because of the way we've structured this system. And that's what, like, when I think of like, um, like both pragmatic anarchy and also, uh, and, and pragmatic anarchist thought, but also when I think about like what it means in the long run as to whether anarchy means no government or whatever, it doesn't, to, to me, the question of government or no government doesn't matter. What matters is the hierarchies, the systems that, in, that codify the hierarchies into the society and, in, and impress it upon them. Um, again, these, like the, the society we've structured, we're born into, and these hierarchies are impressed upon it. 
I don't have the choice or, I mean, I do, but the cost is great. Like, I mean, I, I think of how many kids have gone into the school system and fucking hate school because it's a horrifically abusive and hierarchical system where, hey, if we reformed education, school wouldn't have these problems. You wouldn't have as nearly as big of a problem with dropouts because they wouldn't want to drop out of something that wasn't abusing them anymore. So like, like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Really quick. I, I actually had a conversation with someone. Um, uh, this is someone that I've had a, several debates about. Like um, they, their belief is that the left should use magic in the same way that the, the right uses religion so like paganism and but it's like a very weird thing mm -hmm. but they're also an anarchist and they think that we should do anarchist schooling mm -hmm. um where there's no teachers and the kids kind of self-teach is that like a, a a normal anarchist type belief system because i've worked in education before i've worked in um school like a i worked in an elementary school with kids with behavior issues mm -hmm. and um and kids with autism and stuff like that and uh i cannot imagine a school without a teacher in it without th there needs to be a, a, a an adult in the room right so well, is it is that like a yeah I, so I, it really go for sorry it. you, you want to go, go first i would, yeah. I would say so it really depends on uh, I, I don't think that kids should teach themselves. That seems a weird way to describe it. I think that there is some amount of self-learning that can happen and does happen with people all the time. You know, you learn to do <laughs> problem solving. You know, you sit yourself mm -hmm. down, you, you, you know, you need something, you want something, you figure out what you need to do to get it. Like there is some of this that's very, um, you, you can self-learn, you self-teach this way, you know, you, you, we're, we're, we're learning machines. That's what humans are. It, you put in some inputs, you get reaction, you know, you get new mm -hmm. outputs, you know, like it's, 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 and it's a cycle. You do it more and more. Um, and while I don't think that like self teaching everything is useful because like, I don't know, that seems, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff that's not intuitive and like takes a little bit of, you know, prior knowledge to, to really get to. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I do think that schools, especially modern schools, um, are sort of the continuation of a lot of, um, institutions of social control. They themselves are an institution yeah. of social control. They are designed to push you into the labor force. Um, and they don't really prepare do, you for life or well, um, yes but even more than that like the goal isn't to help you be smarter yes. like being smart quote unquote big quotes around that there yeah. um is critical thinking it's you know problem solving it's how do you approach what you meet in your life how do you take in information how do you process information and how do you utilize information when you have a, um, so there's this idea, depending, it's, it's a little bit with um, more modern pseudo anarchists and regular anarchists where, and of course, not only them, other people had this critique too, but they use this critique for um, anarchistic means, I should say, which mm. is, um, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, what do you do aside from Twitch streaming? Like, like, do you, do, oh, did you, uh, like you said that you work at a school for a little bit. Uh, I but... work at a school for a little bit. Um, currently I'm like a dog trainer. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, have you ever done any like statistics work on like, or like polling oh. work or anything like that? Uh, no, okay. not, nothing like that yet. So a, a common thing if you're working. So like, I used to be like a software developer and we used to have to ask people about what we, you know, our products, you know, like, how, what do you think about this? Did we do what you wanted, you know, properly? Did, did you find our, you know, our product and our, our service effective? But what's really important to know is how you frame your question is going to give, you know, give you different answers, the, just the words that you choose, um, the, the trying to extrapolate information from the answers that you get is extremely difficult. Like, if you ever, if you ever see people talk about, like, gun rights or whatever right like they'll say like well if you look at vermont gun rights are 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 you know there's tons you know people own guns all the time but their murder rate is it you know some low number but if you look at detroit or you look at chicago or whatever 
you know, even there, sometimes yeah. there's no gun or there's there's the gun bans and and they still kill people all the time. So either the gun bans don't work or maybe it's those, you know, evil, gross black people, like really weird racist shit. They're all yeah. really, really gross. But the problem is one of the many problems is doing analysis of that scale between cities requires an immense knowledge of the differing variables going into the cities, right? Yeah, like, of like, course. Yeah, like you have what's going to... on in Chicago is much different than what's going on in Vermont. The, the population, population density. density. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. The, 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 the amount of um, like the, the proximity. The economics of, which, of it. The, yeah. the, the, there's tons of the education, the drugs, the like, there's tons of different things that have mm -hmm. lead into how we, we judge. And, and that's, that's the number one thing that you do as someone who is, who is, who is, you know, trying to extrapolate useful information from statistical um, data is just knowing the information to be able to uh, pick the right places so that you can actually make useful, um, 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 you know, decision, you know, you, you can pull something useful from it. And in the same way, we see that when you have something so far abstracted, like a state, what tends to happen is you are, they are so abstracted from the situation that they have to, it is a necessity to boil this down into understandable statistics and, and numbers that are, that are, you know, that, that, that are, that make it easy to, you know, understand it an entire, because yeah. that's so much to understand. I mean, fuck, even the United States, which is, you know, 50 states of crazy, you know, mountains and beaches and islands and an Arctic area and yeah, huge, yeah, yeah, of course. huge forests everywhere. It's a very different thing in different places. And so what happens is you focus on a few variables and then those become your, you know, your, you know, your, your determining factors that your, 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 the things that you focus on you have to flatten down the reality of the situation into numbers, into some, and how you do that is a question in all of its of itself. And mm -hmm. and yeah. So uh, would would you say that um, like the when it comes to anarchism, like it, it's very theoretical, um, like in terms of um, political ideology, and it's just something more to strive towards, um, or um, like go through it, like. Uh, if I understand correctly, like the the idea behind communism and socialism is like there's different phases of humanity where you go through capital or like feudalism to capitalism to socialism to communism, right? Um, is this just something that we would like strive for in the future, or is this something that you think is um, has like policies that we can put in place? And I'm not saying that's like a good or a bad thing. I'm just sure. Yeah, um, I think I can answer so, this too. Um, if, if yeah, that's if you want right. to take it first, yeah, yeah, yeah go um, for it. And I'd also like to touch a little bit on what what was discussed about the schooling thing. I really mm -hmm. love what you said, Lexi, about um about um the idea like like that our schools aren't designed to make people smart. Um, they aren't. They're designed for job placement. Um, and mm -hmm. guess what? Our educators actually already know that. Our scientists actually already know that. The experts have been saying that for mm -hmm. a long time. The, the thing that's getting in the way is this giant economic system that says that we it's it's in the words of our friend Zizek, uh, pure ideology sniff um sort of things um it is that's all that it is it's we already know better ways to educate children we already know better ways to do it in fact we already do it in some cases. Like, for example, look at how colleges are handled. When you go to college, you're granted a significant more amount of freedom and self-determination, and many people love that. Many people strive and thrive in college because they're given that freedom that is not given to them in high school, I think, in many cases, unjustly. I think most high school kids are actually at the point where they could build their own schedules and do a lot of things and have great success, but we don't let them because that would be that would be too inconvenient. There, there's these political considerations. There's religious considerations. There's familial considerations. Mostly, all of which end up tying back to we need a place for kids to go so that parents can go to work and not have to worry about what their kids are doing all day, and they won't be in prison. Though we, we promise, it's not prison. High school isn't a prison. We promise. 
Um, it isn't. It definitely isn't. Even though we sometimes lock lock kids in rooms for hours at a time and don't allow them to talk to one another, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Do you see what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. we already have better ways of doing this, but that we're not. And the reason why is not because we don't know how, not because it's not possible to build better structures. It's because that's we don't want to. Our society doesn't want to right now. And I think that we have to change. Um, I mean, there's even things such as like Montessori schools, which are a lot closer to what you've um, what you've described. It's not kids necessarily teaching themselves, but rather it's a um, a loosely structured. There's a there's a teacher who functionally acts like a, a guide and sets the basic like things of, oh, hey, here's what we're going to be talking about today. And then there's various um, like st- students share a classroom with older students. So I think they're in like three year brackets and you stay in the same class for three years before you move to another class and new younger students will come in and older students will move out and you interact and the older students help the younger students and the younger students by actually help the older students because as it turns out teaching people is a really great way to help yourself learn and these have had incredible successes these are very popular schools in some areas um and they are built on on very different educational principles um and likewise um something that i i probably disagree ever so slightly with lexion um is the uh just ever so slightly but is the is this idea that like um even even that uh, that like a governance of some form will necessitate uh like a vi- like like a boiling down of details. I don't even know if that's the case. I think as technology advances and our ability to educate advances, we would be able to have like highly specialized like 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 you know, nested councils or something along those lines of people who could advise, who could help one another and who could transmit information highly effectively. And I think there are examples of this. I mean, one such example, and it's not perfect or anarchistic perfectly, but it's certainly something we can look at to learn from is something like Wikipedia, which has a ways of verifying incredibly dense knowledge, like highly specialized knowledge and still making it functional and accessible to people um, because there is um, a because the structure of the thing itself um, is built in such a way to encourage that as the goal. The goal is how do we make a free system that's accessible and also um, you know and also delivers highly specialized knowledge that isn't full of lies. And that was the goal in how they built that structure. There's still flaws in it. There's things they overlooked. Mm. But when we ask ourselves, what is our government currently structured to do? Well, it's very simple. It's an empire. Our government is a corporatist empire. It's designed to perpetuate our ability to go a place, achieve a resource, and yank its riches back to us, and then distribute it based on corporate holdings. That's what our government is currently. It doesn't serve the people at all. We know it doesn't. Every person in this planet knows that it doesn't, even if they say otherwise. Even Republicans who are talking about secession know. Why, why would they be talking about secession if they thought that the government was actually serving them? It doesn't. We have to build the right. structures. The structures have to be built with um, – with, certain things in mind and and i believe therefore this sort of ties into the question that you had just asked which is i believe that therefore like when i think about anarchy i think about it not only as an end goal like we will someday because i don't know what that society will look like who fucking knows by the time we get that thing we might be like nervous jellyfish floating in like a like a we we've terraformed our planet and we're just like all interconnected brains floating to one another and we you know whatever who cares how do you know my true form? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, um, but one, yeah, one I think it's both I, a philosophy I'm... and an, a, an approach and also an end goal. Yeah. Yeah. But how, how scalable are these things? Like the, um, w- like I, I've learned a lot in the short amount of time that I've been streaming, right? Mm-hmm. Cause I want to make sure that I can blow out all the conservatives and sure. ruin them in the marketplace of ideas. And, and so I've learned a lot about our economic system and I've learned about um, how financial systems work. Um, and if I understand correctly, anarchism wouldn't have money. Um, like how scalable are these ideas? Um, would there still be like um, a, a system as com- like complex as the United States, which does deliver um, a, a a modicum of wealth to people, right? It doesn't adequately um, 
uh, like distribute that wealth, but it does make things cheaper for people, you know, like through like specialization of economies and shit like that. Um, so is, is are these things um, transferable over to an anarchist society or is this something that we're going to see like a, a fundamental shift in um, like in terms of like quality of life, people aren't going to have to worry about housing and food and stuff like that necessarily. But will we see, um, you know, technological advances in the same way and the distribution of those things to um, different areas of like, say, we'll just keep it to the United States. Say someone makes something really fucking great, like mm -hmm. an iPad, like 16, right? Mm -hmm. And it puts up holograms and shit and you can um you can taste shit through it yeah. um would would that be something that could be distributed throughout an anarchist society or is this something that um would kind of uh i don't know um section off different parts of um the country or i mean there wouldn't be a country but yeah in terms well, of what we're saying yeah society. i so so let's be clear about a couple things a mm -hmm. Anarchists throughout history have advocated various forms of economic shifts. Um, some of them are a little goofier than others. Um, uh, but if we're talking to me, I don't know what Demon Mama thinks here, but if oh, we're talking share, to me, sure. yeah. um, I believe in um, communism. I, mm -hmm. I think that communism is, um, I mean, it's, I'm a pretty big fan of Marx. I like his writings a lot. I've become less interested the the um in his disciples. <laughs> people like Stalin, Mao, whoever you want to call, if you want to call these people his disciples, I've become a little bit less interested mm -hmm. in what these people have to say about economies and 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 communism itself. But I believe in a system in which um so we can talk about this a few ways. I don't know quite how you want to, 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 to approach this here, but I think that, so communism as your, um, uh, you know, ninth grade textbook would tell you is a stateless, yeah. classless, moneyless society. So some of these can be sort of applicable to different versions of anarchism. Um, and so, for example, the original anarchist communists um, were, um, they, they knew Marx, they knew what he wrote, they summarized some of the things that he wrote, they had a pretty good understanding of him. Um, I mean, there's even a, Marx literally wrote a letter to the anarchist who, who summarized his, you know, capital, Das Kapital, mm -hmm. you know, capital volume one, and, and he was like, hey, I've had like a bunch of people send me summaries and yours is the only good one. Um, <laughs> congrats. Uh, so depending on a lot of, a lot of stuff, but I think that, um, so talking about scalability is a little rough. Um, and, and so for example, we could ask some questions like, do you think that um, slavery is okay if it means that the distribution of goods is, you know, more effective. Well, no, I wouldn't advocate for slavery. Right. Okay. Um, but would you advocate for some sort of like economic subjugation? Maybe something that's a little, you know, you feel a little freer, right? You, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not forced to, 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 forced, you know, I don't, I'm not literally in shackles, forced to, to, you know, work on someone's, you know, uh, in someone's yard. Well, or that's our factory. system right now. Yeah. If yeah, you yeah. don't, if you don't work, then you're, then you starve yeah. and you die. Exactly. And mm -hmm. so we can recognize, um, that even if some pieces might not be as, let's call them efficient as they are now. Um, some of the ways in which we measure these things might be a little unhealthy. So like the oh, current... sure. I, I totally I totally agree that we can we can trade some um, efficiency for more liberty. I, I'm totally on board with that. I, I understand that when we go into like socialism, um, capitalism is very efficient at 
um, growing wealth, but it's not very efficient at uh, distributing wealth, right? From what I understand. I also would argue, okay, so here's where my take is a little different on this, but I think ultimately like our, our end conclusions are somewhat similar. Um, I'm going to be a little bold here and, and, and preach a bit because I actually think preach to me. basically I love, I love. all of those things, all of the things that you brought up would actually be better under anarchic systems. For example, um, right now, like people say it, and take it as granted that like, oh, capitalism's very good at innovation. Um, capitalism is very good at, 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 at certain things. I, I I always ask, well, what's your source for that? Because it says that it is. But what I actually see is a whole bunch of functional communes um, basically doing really amazing things and then getting clubbed over the head and then that thing being resold by corporations. Look at, look at like, all of tech. All of tech, like, the basis of tech was, like, a bunch of, like, random people got in their garage and one of them happened to have money and was like, hey, wouldn't it be cool if we did this thing? And then they made a cool thing and then somebody either in the group or out of the group was like, well, wait a second, we could make a whole fucking load of money off of this really cool thing that you built. But you, they built it like in their garage with like whatever they could scrap together and they made this amazing thing working together and then somebody got exploited after that. And that's like 90% of every single product that you have in your house. No person invented the iPhone. A right. team of millions of people invented the iPhone and one guy gets to go up on a stage and be the person who gets the credit for making the iPhone because we're stupid and um you know and that's what annoys the shit out of me is that like the best stuff is like i mean fuck like the best shit that we build always comes from these systems where tons of tons of skilled people are able to work together and talk about shit and learn from one another and and correct and engage with people in their community like i can think of like an example just like a small like sort of frivolous example off the top of my head there's a game that I really love that's called Dead Cells. Fantastic game. Made by a co-op, believe it or not. Um, made by a co-op and also has been perpetually updating the game since it launched and has continually refined itself into a better form of the game. And the game now is way better than it was on launch. And one of the big things that they do is they, every time they do an update, they take things from their community that their community suggests and they credit it to their community and everything who the poster was who came up with the post and whatever they listen to the patch notes and this has allowed the people who play the game to make the game way better like way better and yeah there's been a few mistakes here and there things they've had to revert but by and large like this is like a a, a game that's developed into something that's one of the best games out there in my opinion and these are how a lot of things actually work innovation efficiency People work these problems out when they're not um, when they're not being uh, pit against each other. People being pit against each other in competitive um, markets is beneficial to the people who are at the top of that market and no one else. And you actually will have a better like we've been sold this idea that that um, capitalism is very efficient at inventing things. It's not at all actually very efficient at inventing things. It's very efficient at tricking people into inventing things that are then stolen and make a fuckload of money um we're humans are actually what's pretty good at inventing things humans working together with each other collaboration is what invest invents shit and so in my mind um like i think that an anarchist a more anarchistic society would we would see a direct increase in every single thing that we like about our current society and probably no decrease. There might be some things where like um, due to uh, external factors, there might have to be like, for example, but I don't think that this is, um, I don't think this is intrinsic to like anarchy or, or, or communism. Um, and, and an example of this is like, um, it doesn't matter which system we're going forward on. We're going to have to make some serious changes to our lifestyle with regard to the environment. Um, and in fact, yeah. if we keep going with capitalism, oh boy, most of us are going to be living in, well, we're probably going to die of infectious and of infected water in a couple of years. Um, so yeah. if you, I mean, yeah, maybe, maybe, com, maybe capitalism is really, really great at giving us the iPhone, but 10 years from now, we're all going to be dead and we won't have an iPhone to use. So that kind of sucks. Um, and the way I look at it is, is, is like, um, an an anarchic system is, it promotes, it better promotes than our current system. Um, the exact things that we like, 
like some people talk about this is one of the memes that gets brought up by right wingers a lot about like uh, uh vuvuzela like every like mm -hmm. 200 toilet papers that are all the same brand haha -ha. and it's like well like first of all people naturally desire their own little variances and their own little upgrades and that's never going anywhere that's like almost intrinsic to humanity our system doesn't even allow you for that like 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 th like think about this like there's fucking people who for free totally for free no benefit of their own except for maybe the praise and ad adoration of the people around them will make total conversion mods for some random obscure game that like 10 people play and they'll put a fuckload of effort into this thing just for the fulfillment of getting to do the thing that they wanted mm -hmm. to do that is is much more likely to produce like 10 different breakfast cereals if there's like a bunch of people who really want different breakfast cereals than capitalism is and in fact what we see right now is that the price that we pay to have 10 different brands of functionally identical toilet paper um it's not that people value different toilet paper really there probably would be you know to some degree people should probably use something other than toilet paper it's not very good for you um but uh uh like wipes you know those are good um but uh the uh but but the fact of the matter is that like that's like a choice that we're told we like because it perpetuates brands making more money off of charging you 25 cents more for the name brand padded toilet paper and not the walmart brand poor person padded toilet paper or whatever the fuck you want to come up with like there's a hundred different products i mean often these these different brands are the exact same thing just yes. put into different packages i mean yep. uh, i think that there are like many brands of bread that are in the same exact factory the exact literally the exact same bread but it goes into the walmart great value and then it also goes into name brand bread i don't yeah, actually you put look on at the, brand the bread. they live glasses and all of a sudden you realize that lucky charms and and um what's the fucking marshmallow mateys are the exact same thing both of them <laughs> are made by kellogg or whatever and it doesn't matter and you should you know probably just buy the cheaper one in their current society but yeah mm -hmm. so i think i think we're kind of um around an issue and haven't quite put our finger on it and i think what we're what we're really I think the core of this issue is the way in which production and distribution are related to one another. Mm -hmm. um, so distribution itself is the, it, it's directly part of the production system. Like, um, really quick, let me, yeah. uh, Dylan Burns, thank you for the raid, my friend. Hey, everybody. We're talking with Demon Mama and um, Cyber Witch Lexi. Um, do, uh, you have a different Twitch name. Um, how do how do I say that? Uh, I go by Exilix now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Exilix. Um, we're having a great conversation about uh, anarchism because I am a dumb fuck and I don't know anything about lefty theory. No, nah, no. Nah. The but, great um, thing about anarchy is that um, there's been a whole lot of anarchist himbos in the past, and it's okay to be to, to like it's it, you can be a part of it. It's great. We lo we love it here, so don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, no, I, I was um, I was talking to someone last night in the, the stream team that Dylan Burns has put together. I went through everyone and was like, oh, he has a PhD and is researching cancer. Dylan Burns is a boy genius. I went down the list, everyone's achievements. I'm like, and I'm the himbo because <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm still going through college. So, um, but yeah, hey, everybody stick around. And this is a very interesting conversation. I'm enjoying it greatly. So. Um, um, but yeah, the, the, the underlying question about, um, uh, distribution and stuff that you were bringing up. Um, so these things are pretty directly tied to one another and more than them being tied to one another. Um, we also have to recognize the way in which, um, consumption, um, let's say reproduces the desire. So it, so under capitalism, you know, you might think, oh, well, nothing gets produced unless people are buying it. Right. Um, but the, the consumption in the first place, the, the, the initial, you know, taking it in is recreates that, that entire want for it, that feel for it. Um, yeah. and it's not that I, I don't want, so I've, 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 
when things like this are brought up, it's often that I hear a criticism that this is implying some form of like want for a uh, uh, pure subsistence or something that like luxury or whatever you want to call it, you know, mm -hmm. comfort is a negative thing, but that's not true. Like there, but we can't imagine the things that haven't been, oh my God, I just bit my lip. <laughs> no. We can't, we can't imagine the things that haven't been produced that we haven't consumed before. Like, like sure. And you know, you, the people imagine them and develop them off of what exists today, but they're always predicated on what currently, you know, exists. You know, you can't have a PlayStation without first developing, you know, microchips and you can't, you know, without mm. CDs, without, you know, uh, the current, you know, uh, 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 downloading, you know, the, the, the current state of internet, uh, you know, downloading and uploading, like, all these things develop one another in, 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 in some form. Um, and I, um, I wanted to wrap this back around into your initial question. And I'm now blanking on the initial question of, um, what did you ask? Um, it, it was mostly just about, um, uh, distribution and, um, like how, like, I, I'm I know that like trading some efficiency for liberty is necessary and I'm super fine with that because you know um if we're not like so, we don't have as many liberties as we would think here in the US uh when it comes to like economic liberty. So um yeah. Yeah, we don't uh, have many, I would argue, in fact. Like I think this is one of the things one of the one of the myths I would like to and strive to put down the most is this idea that capitalism is somehow um, efficient. If you've ever, like, if you've worked in, like, traditionally capitalist, high, like, high capitalism jobs, like sales or the or insurance or anything like that, you realize there is no such thing as efficiency under capitalism. It's only when it's convenient for the profit, and most of the time it's not. Um, I would, <laughs> the most efficient system would be, um, gathering up every human um slapping them into a factory uh, putting like a helmet on top of them that mind controls them and a hive mind tells us what to do so that we can expand out to every other planet in the gal that would be very efficient obviously we don't want that but f capitalism is not efficient either it's a bunch of fucking thieves constantly trying to find ways to fuck each other over without without anybody else noticing for as long as possible and often that means deliberately sabotaging the the operations that once made their oh my god it's so bad like like if you want an example of this look at the history of of the rental like rental car industry and how like like company after company in this industry would come up with like some cool efficient way to cut their prices down a little bit and then they would get slightly ahead and then immediately all of the people on top go oh shit we can keep making our income better and then they go and they do that and they inflate their own income they inflate their own wealth and whatever and then they jump the fuck out and the company just blows up and everybody um, i'm sorry to interrupt i gotta go check on something i heard a big crash and i think my cats did something stupid i'll be oh, right back shit. yeah no worries <laughs> oh, gosh. yeah um it's fine we can probably wrap up relatively soon um, cause I'm, I'm starting to get a bit of a headache. Um, so I might need to, to halt it, the streaming for the time being. Plus I have and another stream to do in the morning, but I feel like we've gotten over a lot of really awesome topics and I don't know if it's possible to anarcho pill somebody in a single stream, but I feel like we've made a good effort. <laughs> I, I'm less interested if, uh, about them becoming one and more interested just about having an understanding that's not, um. I'll be rude. Um, anarcho social democracy. Yeah, anarcho sock them. Yeah. 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 That is a. Uh, yeah, we we share that interest. Um, I am, you know, I, I talk about a lot of pragmatic politics, but the way that I view it is, uh, the the way that I come to the conclusions and analyze them is not with the end goal of just getting Bernie Sanders or a Bernie Sanders alike into office. Um, my goal is, how do we teach people? And, and 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 give them the tools to self enlighten so that the systems that we have can be completely and utterly rebuilt in ways that are desperately needed because um we're operating on like systems that were sort of put into place like a like like a couple hundred years ago and they're pretty shitty 
Hey, so I was just saying, um, probably uh, gonna want to wrap this up here because I'm I'm uh, getting a little bit of a headache and. Um, well, absolutely, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But I I hope um I hope that we were able to address um a lot of the uh questions that you had. And yeah, if there's any others you want to do, maybe we could do one more and then we'll call it for now. And I'm totally open to having this conversation and uh, more again in the future, of course. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll do one from my uh, from my chat. Um, how does an anarchist society make sure it's meeting everyone's needs? Hmm. Uh, well, this I think be as broad or as narrow as you would like to. I'm going to go. I'm going to go to the, the one that I would prefer, which is um, a, a communist socialist. How are you going to describe that is. Um, I really don't want to get too deep, but um, are you familiar at all with labor vouchers? No. Okay, so Marx described um, labor vouchers, and labor vouchers um, are essentially this idea. So money to Marx is a thing that circulates and accumulates, right? Like, like I I I go to the store, I buy bread. The the money that I paid goes partially to the people who made the bread, partially to the people who owned that business, partially to the person who you know sold it to the to the to the uh, uh, the business that I bought it from. You know, like it's you know there's a bunch of people that, that it gets sold to and, and and involved with, and um, it accumulates. You can you know I work X amount of jobs for X amount of hours, and I have a bank account that holds all of that, and as I as I you know it stays there forever and and I can invest it in capital and that can make it increase or, you know, decrease depending on stocks and all sorts of other stuff, you know, um, but it grows, it continues to, and Marx basically got into uh, a, a, an idea in which um, socialism being to him, um, lower phase communism, um, he describes lower and higher phase communism with lower phase communism being renamed later to socialism, as the um, he, he describes labor vouchers as a way to um, do labor and earn something in return that can be exchanged for a, a, another product in society. But before that, society and the people within it have to recognize the way in which they everything they do is predicated on society, you know, right? Like, I can't work at a factory without the factory existing, right? I can't mm -hmm. go make myself, as you said, so I'm going to also hit on another one of the things that you said really, really, really quick, which was yeah. what if someone designs, you know, they, 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 they have this really cool uh, uh, iPhone, iPad uh, 3000, right? Whatever. Um, and the ability to have um, free and equal access to all of the means of production, all of the the you know society means that that when someone designs that and when that exists in society you can have people that create it or receive something for what they create and also that can be um you know procured by people uh uh through the labor that they also do for you know something else entirely um one so he described it as one labor hour for one um uh you know per piece of thing that you do uh that was a bad mm -hmm. way to describe it so like you know my labor value would take me down 10 hours to to do something to to create a thing that would be you know 10 labor vouchers essentially a labor voucher worth 10 um and uh i don't want to get too deep into how this um how things would be priced in this system because that's not super uh important but i mean it is important but it's not getting into it here it would take too long and basically cool. what i want to describe is labor vouchers would only apply to um things that are outside of the continuation of society so like do you need an ipad 3000 for the continuation of society no are they still would they still be maybe cool to have Absolutely. Like some cool piece of technology, you know, whatever the technology is, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That like, there would still be things that are, you know, fun and pleasurable and comfortable. And, you know, these would still be created, but the labor that comes first is necessary. Like, like the, for the continuation of society, that there has to be the societal deduction, if you will. Um, and that, that's how you would, you know, begin to, 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 
make sure that everything is actually taken care of, that the, the, all of the people of society are taken care of because they are society. We are, mm -hmm. you know, the products of, of hundreds of millions of, you know, labor, you know, you know, hours of labor from dead people that's, you know, accumulated into where we are today. And that will continue for as long as people will exist. And in doing so, we, sh we have to understand our position here, which is a society, a world, an entire world that has to, I don't, I don't want humans to disappear. I would like our existence to continue. So in this mm -hmm. continuation comes the next step of, we'll call it, we'll call it a super civilization or something like the, the understanding your, your actual recognition of this, 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 your place in labor itself in in continuing societies. Marx says that um, capitalism, every laborer, um, we're all, we're all part of, you know, this thing in a very indirect way, right? Like when I go to my job, I don't, there's, there's not like a, like a, like an understanding of my position in the entire system, right? Like I'm doing my one thing and I stand there and I do it. I go home, I do it tomorrow. I stand there, I do my one thing. It's very indirect, but he describes a very direct system of, of, you know, we yeah, all, we're, we understand our, our thing. Like we're, we're here, we're working through it. Uh, you know, you don't have to be doing one thing forever. You have the, the, the freedom and equal access to, to, to do all of the, you know, production of society, all of the continuation of it. You know, there, there will be multiple things that need to be done and, uh, multiple things that, you know, he just, he says, and I think this quote's really good. He says that, um, pull it up right here. Free activity for the communists is the creative manifestation of life arising from the free development of all abilities of the whole person. And I think, I think that's, that's what I, what, what I want. I want all of the uh, aspects and abilities of a person to be developed through society for society. Um, it's a very, uh, uh, I want to transcend that individualist collectivist divide here. It's it's yeah. both. We are yeah. simultaneously beings that want to be free, want to develop ourselves and also rely on each other. Yeah. 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 I don't know. We're, There's we're my individuals spiel. in a collective. And I, I think that I like the, the idea of like, um, one thing I, I try to, um, hammer into people that watch me is that like, you know, um, if, if society were to collapse, and we all just decide to be individuals, uh, you know, like have fun with that. If you're like walking around in the woods hunting and then you like sprain your ankle, uh, have fun um, sleeping in the creek. Right. Yeah. Um, but if we all work together, then we don't all die. Right. We might eventually like die out if we don't work together, but together we're much stronger and we can create um, much better things and achieve much higher goals. So, yeah. Um, yeah. This has been a very, could, Oh yeah. If I could touch on this one question before yeah, yeah. we end, um, like, I think there's a couple of things I could touch on here. That'd be very interesting. First of all, as a recommendation for people who want to envision a, um, a, a communist post scarcity society, there's a great one in a wonderful piece of fiction that I love very much. Um, called the void trilogy which is a sequel to the commonwealth trilogy it's called higher society and higher society is a um it's a communist society where people come from all over the galaxy and you when you join higher society you there's all these assumptions and things you're educated about the entire thing there's a whole process by which you join the society all of your needs are taken care of and there is a currency kind of it's a pseudo currency there's a you everyone is given these sort of L energy credits that are representations of the um the total energy output of the society as a whole it's very it's very clear how this particular thing that you're able to get nice little bonuses for you for yourself or for your project or whatever um how that ties into the overall society as they work together um and 
And uh, if you look up, you don't even have to read the series if you don't want to, although it is a wonderful sci-fi series um, that really tackles like the way, the different directions that humanity could go as technology develops. It's, it's really like classically sci-fi in that way and that it challenges you to think about what types of worlds are possible. Um, the higher society, the way it's described is, um, is really, really interesting. And the way that um, things work um, within higher society is very different than what we understand the currency is not some sort of like um sacrosanct uh like standing alone thing that buys you happiness it's simply a representation of what everyone shares in being a part of the society and contributing to the society and functioning in the society and doing the things that you do which bring value to it and you being a part of it is valuable in and of itself because the society benefits from you being a part of it and you bringing your ideas and your unique unique perspective from it um, this is something that I think I wish more people would realize, which is that money is fucking made up. And I know that mm -hmm. sounds like a meme and like people like, like the, like destiny and shit like that will be like, eh, it's stupid, but it is literally just made up. We took some math and we said, Hey, this is kind of a cool way for us to calculate the value. What do you, do you even know what a dollar is? Does any person on this planet know what a fucking dollar means anymore? Nobody fucking knows. It doesn't even, you can't even use right, the Big yeah. Mac scale anymore. Like you can't even know like, oh yeah, if I work for three hours, I'm going to be able to get a 10 Big Macs or whatever the fuck it is. You can't even do mm -hmm. that anymore. It's just some piece of paper that kind of vaguely associates with the general wealth of your country as a whole but it's actually tied to petroleum and it's completely idiotic and some people have so much of it that um they can literally buy matryoshka yachts that go inside out of each other and other people you you have enough to buy a, a french fry and then you die um so like i wish people would realize that money is a tool and that we can build like currencies in or 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 ways of sharing things different systems like a hundred different like a hundred thousand different ways there's a million different mathematical systems we could use for determining um like what do we do because like i i think that some sort of like like value or something representation is probably going to be used in some way some for for some time but there's different ways we can calculate this right now our money is just uh, every single time you see a dollar you might as well just imagine jeff bezos just flipping you off and that's basically what every single dollar represents in our current system you have no idea what what made that why you're getting it like if you really did anything worth doing it some people will work a job where they just stand and look at a look at the ceiling groaning all day because they don't actually have anything to do with their job um other people will slave all day pounding rocks into dust at, at, at like a literal rock breaking factory which there's one behind my house i know firsthand there's at least 25 or 30 people that do that um so yeah, it, it's it's one of those things where, in, in a system, in like an anarchic system. First of all, I'm one of those people. I always people get mad at me about this, but I'm one of those anti-work people. I don't think that people should be compelled to work. I think that people will self-motivate out of a sense of need, and therefore, and from that assumption about humans, that humans, more or less, barring mm -hmm. very specific circumstances, will actually self-motivate to do things. We do it all the time. Again, don't believe me? Go look at how many They're fucking go look at how many Skyrim mods there are that don't need to exist. Yet people still made them because they were passionate about having a big titty vampire yeah. or whatever. Like, okay, that's I mean, awesome. There's, there's real world examples of this. Like mm -hmm. in Sweden, uh, the people have a very very strong social safety net. They don't necessarily have to work, there, but I mean they're strongly encouraged to. But yeah. they don't necessarily have to. They can take time off of work in order to, um, like you know, if they want to start their own business or if they want to do something else, take care of a family member, they can do that. But even though they don't necessarily have to, people still do. Yes, of course. Why? Because I mean, people like to produce things. People like to have some purpose in life. And a lot of the purpose that people get is producing something or creating something and seeing how that does, you know? Yeah. Um. We've become like s slaves to a certain type of currency, like a certain interpretation or, or to currency in general um, in a way that I think is uh, needs – like we need to break ourselves out from that because – um. The fact of the matter is that um, most of our lives is not based on any sort of currency exchange, I except it's very weird here in America, especially. Um, I, I think it's like starting like I mean, I think it has for some time, but I think it's part getting particularly bad now where like um, a lot of people I know, their parents basically are like, oh, yeah, you like owe me for having you and like for 
giving you a house space. Well, it's like, no, that's not how it works. Like we bring value to one another for different reasons. Like the reason why you take care of your kid is because then you get to have a kid. Then you get to have somebody who you get to watch grow up and, and live a happy life. It's, it's, in, it's valuable in and of itself. And then, mm -hmm. you know, the, the kids usually take care of their parents because, oh, you love your parent. There's a bond there. And that goes for all kinds of other things. We do this all the time. Why don't mm -hmm. we, why don't, why do we pretend that everything must be um, incentivized with cold, hard cash when we know there are other incentive systems that are actually healthier for us? Um, and that's the way that I tend to look at that particular problem. Um, and also, again, um, part of the reason why I believe that as we move towards more anarchic, uh, more communistic structures, we will actually have a more um, beneficial, more efficient and a happier world. I just think it's a better system in every way. Mm -hmm. And and then of course, like to tie this around, cause I know that you said like the pragmatism stuff is important to you. Well, mm -hmm. guess what? A lot of us right now are already living um, some like primordial form of whatever society is going to come. Because um, a lot of us, right now um only are here because of random mutual aid things um like fuck like i only have this chair that i'm sitting in because my viewers for some reason thought that i was valuable enough to toss money my way um so that i could have this chair so that i stop hurting my back like and mm -hmm. now my squid has the old broken chair which is great um but um but like like that is if anyone wants to give me money for a new chair so i stop screeching all over the place <laughs> when i lean back hey chat Good time to get a chair, yeah. by the way. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, we do this, we do stuff like this all the time. Um, right now, America is like, people say America runs on Duncan. No, America currently runs on mutual aid. Like, I'm not kidding you. Do you have any GoFundMes? Like, there's like a lot of Americans who'd be dead right now if it wasn't for like GoFundMe existing. And yeah, that's like um in our current Just system, you know, that it involves changing money. But the fact of the matter is that people are spending their money to sustain other humans because it's intrinsically valuable and they want to see those other humans happy. And we should take note of that and go, oh, wait a second. Maybe we could build a society that kind of like recognizes that instead of pretends that like we all actually hate each other and want each other to die and want to like choke each other out for a penny or something like maybe we should consider that a little bit and i do think that anarchic and communistic as a lar in a larger scale um like those solutions do actually posit that type of world and that type of structure so yeah anyway um yeah, yeah so um this has been a great talk my head is um hurting so i'm going to yeah, say i don't want to keep you goodbye yeah. for now for now but i would hope that we could all <laughs> collaborate again in the future and um as Absolutely. as the unwilling subjects or the partially willing subjects of the modern serfdom that is streaming we will engage in defiant and revolutionary mutual aid by helping one another make content and encouraging one another isn't that kind of cool <laughs> kind of an Absolutely. interesting way of looking at things and i was actually going to ask right before we go um if either of you guys um in, like in the near future i'm going to try my hand at like the video essay stuff if you guys would be um interested in helping me like write like if i can send you guys uh scripts and like have you guys tell me well actually that was wrong as fuck let me actually correct it um because <laughs> yeah. I, I yeah what i want to um after my first big one that i want to do with my um roommate i want to go through different uh anarchic um political ideologies starting with anarcho-communism you know and then do some of the the sillier ones like anarcho-primitivism and ancap and like just like go through these things careful. and um careful yeah. calling anar and prim silly they might get you they might get you with a uh, club yeah. or a rock yeah no I, I think i can hear some some people uh going ooga booga outside my room uh outside my house right now but um what i uh uh, I want to explore these things because I find political um, theory very interesting. I'm going to school for political science and making um, people more aware of these things, especially as socialism is on the rise. Um, I, I want to make these things known, make people know why libertarian anarcho-capitalism is dumb as fuck. Um, and, you know, like bring awareness to these things as small as my channel is right now maybe we can um as i grow i can have my audience disseminate these things and have people understand um the why people believe the things that they do sure. so absolutely. yeah absolutely and i've really enjoyed this conversation it's been super fun 
Um, I don't want to keep DM on any uh, any longer than uh, we have to because of her headache. But yeah, yeah any um, anytime you guys are down to chat, please shoot me a DM because I'm 100%. always happy to have conversations with people. Absolutely. And um, thank you both for coming on. Um, yeah, of course. Uh, we've been uh, my chat has been full of people using the guest command to find out where you all are at. So that I think is a good sign. Um, yeah. and so, yeah, I've really, really loved this conversation, um, with both of you, um, Lexi, of course, thank you for coming on and talking about, uh, Lord of the Rings nerd shit with me. It was very, very fun <laughs> yeah. and anarchy nerd shit. Um, I which was really so, well, we're talking about Lord of the Rings. Yeah. yeah that was the first part of the stream. Oh, we were talking about oh, lore. My. Yeah. That's, that's, fun. uh, that's my shit. I love like fantasy and sci-fi, um, lore. Uh, nice. I know, uh, Warhammer lore is like the one I know the most about, but Lord of the Rings is like second after that. So yeah, okay, good good choices. I mean, we were talking about the comparisons between. No, we can't get back into it. Okay, okay, so, okay. It yeah, was yeah, very yeah, fun. Right. Goodbye, yeah. everybody. Please be safe. Yeah. Bye. Talk Have to a you good night. Soon. Thank you so much. Yeah. Gotcha. Bye. Bye. All right, everyone. All right, all right, all right, all right. Thank you all for watching today. Thank you all very much for watching today.